Get them Jimmy, where low shack at The bottles getting nippy up the crack and we stacking Chips, all of it's what I want Plus money winners, that's what I'm on You can say I'm gone I prefer elevated pub sports radio Time to get educated, we get produced Leave the juice, letting loose with so much abuse That the bookies wanna call a truce They get slaughtered, can't forget Jeff and low baggers in the chat That's a lethal weapon to be what up cappers gamblers punters hustlers low baggers happy thursday february 22nd to all of you thank you for watching betting with the bag right here on pub sports radio you know uh stakes are high for me with the unit size going up on january 1st and, and not really delivering and i think you know looking back at the college card yesterday where you know a lot of our cappers in the chat and, and on screen had a lot of success and i just kind of stayed on the fence uh it bothered it bothered me how i capped the card and i think that you know usually pressure in my life is something that i've been able to handle and i kind of like you know, I like when the stakes are high and the, and the pressure's on. And, uh, you know, I just I didn't handle it well yesterday. And so, you know, while capping, because uh, we have 37 different games that we're capping here on the show, we got to keep a brisk pace and, and we got to, uh, you know, deliver and move quickly. You know, going over, I I knew that today I had to attack the card. I've got to attack the card. Can't be pensive. I uh, can't over, you know, don't overthink things like I did in the college basketball card. I mean, Clemson, you know, with the Rebenga yesterday, first half of the game, it was just right there on the silver platter. There were spots that were right there on the silver platter for me that I just didn't seem to open up to. So I have attacked the NHL card, and we're going to get into that right now. I've hammered it. Uh, I'm going all in. And... You know, we are gamblers and we have to deal with the consequences that come. I'm hammering everything today. I'm attacking everything today. And, you know, I, I guess I kind of have a bit of nervous energy in saying that out loud, but this is uh, the life that we wanted. We wanted a big bank roll and the stakes to be high. Uh, we've built this, you know, our whole life, you know, and we're trying to build a bigger and bigger bank roll. So, Let's go. Let's go. Uh, one thing, a couple of things going on just in, in the fam, in the low bag fam. One, um, there was a capper who consistently said in the chat, if anything is wrong, if anything's going wrong for you guys, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. And that was Perky Sanderson. Uh, and on Tuesday, uh, his wife died and he shut down his Twitter account. So we can't get a hold of him. Uh, so if you're watching Perky, uh, we'd like to now be there for you. Uh, you always talked about uh, being there for us, and I can't imagine what you're going through right now. So if you're watching this, uh, please give us some route to uh, connect with you. And uh, just know that we're all thinking about you, and there's no words that can, you know, uh, that would, uh, you know, kind of put what you're going through into a encapsulated at all. So I'm not going to try. I, I just want you to know that, you know, you're not alone and we're here for you and we love you. And anytime you want to come back capping, uh, we're ready to rock. That's what, that's what we do. Uh, also uh, not flush Allen's, you know, other than work, he's going to be at the hospital uh, for his dad. And we're thinking about you not flush as well. So, uh, you two guys, you're in our hearts, you're in our thoughts, and now let's cap and let's win. Uh, stakes are high. Let's go. So, shout out to all the cappers in the chat. We got Billy Friedrich's Pig Milk play today, Arkansas Little Rock, Southeast Missouri State, under 150. I've got that copied and pasted. Uh, Tory Coker, uh, his uh, play of the day, we'll call it that. Uh, Orlando Magic plus seven. I'd like to copy and paste that in our NBA. And we're going to have to work really quickly. 
I, I need Jose to kind of keep me in check here so I don't start waxing poetic too long uh, on any type of situation. We got to work quickly and we got to get paid. Those are the most important spots here. Uh, Justin McKelvey on uh, man, man, uh, over 23 and a half points, rebounds, and assists for the Hornets. Hornets, uh, you know, out of nowhere, really, won three straight to finish off the break. And it looks like for the Pistons and the Hornets, the trade deadline brought players who are, you know, trying to prove themselves. And they are, they look much better. Uh, we, I don't know how long that will last, but. Let's see right now. Uh, we have uh, a very interesting NBA card coming off the break. You know, uh, as I was saying, I'm going to attack the card fully. I'm going to be a little pensive around that. But I like the way I've set it up. You know, we've been doing this for years and years now. I like the way we've set up uh, these games. And, and Billy Brisbane going to be rolling with us. We have a huge card, 37 different games we're capping here. We got Mr. Gogster for NHL. In college basketball, we go in order with Mikey Money. Dabby Cab, Dabby Cab off another successful night last night. Mikey Money, Dabby Cab, and Dave Rogers, and then Brizzy will close it up with NBA. And <sighs> let's get back at you, man. I just feel so heavy with the need to succeed, man. Razor Sharp picks in the house. He has been succeeding. Sixteen hundred dollar pick five uh, yesterday at Mahoning Valley, just crushing Mahoning Valley. Great, great work, Razor. Uh, there's Ian Shaber in the house, and I can't move my chat let me see if i can uh fix that here pop this chat out here Let's see if i can there we go okay we're back in business we're back in business so slatsy coming out four in one night in nhl you matthews the score was also that 50th goal was a thing of beauty from that angle looking like you're gonna pass the puck and sniping he he's a phenomenal uh phenomenal hockey player there's no doubt about it. and i like him as a person like he's just he's quality uh dude's quality matthew sean i mean the the leafs looked so good uh, it was very uncomfortable being on the coyotes uh very very uncomfortable thank god for the blue jackets or it just would have been an absolute horror show but it was still not a good day that must be fixed great job four and one slots he's on knucks money line first period in full game tonight that's one of the few games i've stayed off of at this point joey harb series business jpz saying staying away from bruins games until further notice i don't think you should jay i think you should fade them tonight and then fade them on saturday night with the canucks they lost grizzlick as well uh, so they they now are in I mean, McAvoy, what a monster. I mean, he looked hurt at one point, and he's just a phenomenal hockey player. Of course, the Canucks drafted Ole Uolevi, who uh, I don't know what he does now. I, I have no idea. Maybe he's a pinball player like Todd McCullough. I have no idea where the hell Ole Uolevi is, but that's who the Canucks drafted over Charlie McAvoy. But uh, fade the Bruins. Fade the Bruins. Hampus Lindholm and Grizzlick. Now, look, they they're a gutsy hockey team. They have a ton of heart and a ton of character and passer and access sniper. Fade them. Fade them. Fade them. I'm fading them tonight. I'm fading them on Saturday night. And I get it if, if you are a little pensive. And there's my guy Kent Davies in the house. Uh, Kent Davies saying, he, you know, Kent Davies, we've talked already about the card. He's he's hammering the, the flames against the Bruins tonight. So we shall see. Subhuman Gaucho, the dapper capper in the house. Rocco Rogers ready to go. And Warren Fogel, I mean, that uh, he looked great. I mean, that goaltending in the Bruins Oilers games was absolutely atrocious. I mean, I just can't imagine how the Oilers are going to be able to make a run. Or, or the Bruins, for that matter. Maybe it's your mark will be in that. Joe T ready to get to work. There's Kent Davis. says two big plays, Flames money line in Idaho, plus 10 and a half. Uh, we have Morgan Spooner in the house. Northwestern minus 12 and a half from Grand Canyon, Seattle. Moneyline parlay. Uh, there's wine time. Bachelor party starts. They mean the fellas heading up to like Arrowhead. Got a huge Airbnb. Going to gamble party all weekend. Uh, you know, I have not helped you this week at all, wine time. Uh, and it's uh, uh, really bothers me. So my NHL has not helped. And, and I'm absolutely attacking uh, the board today. So hopefully I can change that. But have an incredible weekend and uh, have fun. Have fun with the group. Uh, enjoy the moment. Uh, enjoy the moment, man. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to copy and paste Morgan Spooner's action here. Uh, wine at Time Sports. There is Dan Kelly in the house. Joey Harb gave out Chattanooga over 145 and a half. Lands on 146. Uh, got that cash. Subhuman Gaucho on Roma. 
uh, over two and a half. Acardi, uh, let's see. oh, I, I, you know, I don't know the Europa teams well enough to pronounce them properly, but I believe you will get that cash subhuman gaucho. I Warsaw, I know that, but go get it, go get it. So, uh, let's get to work. Um, let's get to work. We got mob rule in the house. Uh, Mob Rule, Justin McKelvey, D Rock, a great, great group. Kongs, Clips, Nordy, Slatsy, Liquor Store, Nate Dog 420, Markel, Philly Eagle Flyer, Rodney Barton, Viper and B, uh, G Biz, ready to get to work. Great, great group. Dabby Cab is running so nice. Another winning night for DC Capper. I love to see it. We got Coin ready to go. Swiggy Bets in the house. Uh, Markel, great to see you. Brian Watson ready to go. So let's do exactly that. Uh, let's deliver. Uh, put in 5866 thing. Let's get that cash. Let's deliver right now. Let's lock in. Keep a brisk pace and cap well. Let's be sharp. And let's get paid in full. Let's bring on your first guest. I haven't capped the NHL card with him in a while. I'm excited to get to work with him. And I know there's a bit of a heaviness, you know, to start the show. But let's just focus on what we love more than anything else. And that is finding angles in sports and betting them. So let's get after it right now. Uh, our star of Thursday's shows, uh, there is an um, emergency in the uh, hamlet of Belleville. Uh, emergency it's all over the news at 23 ods in the last uh, 24 hours um in the hamlet of belleville ontario uh maybe coaxter can enlighten us on what the hell's going on up there right now but please without further ado welcome mr coaxter to the show coaxter how are you my friend oh not doing too bad yeah you heard about that eh, Jim? yeah yeah we did we did here yeah it's getting pretty it's actually just down the road actually i might be able to no, they're not out right now, but uh, no. yeah, it's 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 not too good. We're trying to get help here in the old Bell Vegas and uh, rough times for the city. But um, our hockey team's doing pretty good. The Belleville Senators are starting to move up in the Atlantic, so you All know right. we got the we got the HL Belleville Sens and uh, Ottawa going tonight. Eh, going up against Dallas won't be easy for the boys. So um, looking forward to get after the card with you, Jimmy. Let's do just that. Now, I did have to make a decision at one point uh, this morning, and I was up very early and up very late, and I decided to let the records go today. It was going to take too much time. I needed to put more time into the NBA card. Uh, I hammered NHL all night. Uh, so uh, so that there will be no records today, unfortunately. I'll get them back uh, here as soon as possible. Uh, Swiggy Bets is reading a news story. They don't even give your city credit. They just call it an Eastern Ontario city. <laughs> they, don't even, they won't even say the name. They won't even give you that. They what do they say? Uh, uh, the mistake on the lake. There you go. It's kind of like us. The, the spreadsheet play of the day is in. And that was my final bet that I almost didn't want to make. My Jeez. final bet. I am on the spreadsheet play of the day. And I can explain it. It just took me a little while to explain it. Let me copy and paste that right here for the spreadsheet play day from Ron Crawford. Let me also copy and paste here. Uh, Northern Kentucky in college basketball. Thank you for sharing that with us. Here we go. Let's get that one locked in. And then, of course, we have our NBA spreadsheet play of the day as well. And it is the Wizards. The Wizards. A lot of uh, first half, second half, back-to-backs here. Uh, so uh, Kent Davies says the Kings are impossible to figure out. I'm tough. You know, maybe that is the case. Or, or maybe they just heat up right now. So, yeah. you know, we'll see. Uh, they certainly, certainly, okay, we saw the Ducks and the Kings in the exact same very difficult travel situation. Um, what was the difference where the Kings are, are playing with a new coach and, and all business and took care of things and the Ducks allowed, you know, four goals immediately to the Blue Jackets. So, okay, uh, let's roll and let's deliver Mr. Gokster. We start at 7 p.m. Eastern. The Dallas Stars 34, 15, and 8, 17, 7, and 5 on the road. The Ottawa Senators 23, 27, and 3, 15, 13, and 2 at home. Canadian Tire Center in Ottawa, Ontario. We have Ottinger uh, versus Corpusalo listed. Let me know if that's correct. Forsberg's in. Forsberg's in for Ottawa. 
and Tom Forsberg. Okay, so can you touch on Forsberg when we hand it over? But Ottinger, 29 and 4, 2.93 goals against average 9 and 4, save percentage 1. Shout out Dallas, 23% power play, 82.4% penalty killing. They're a deep hockey team. Ottawa, 15.9% power play, 74.7% penalty killing. I guess. It should never be trusted as a favorite and backed as a dog. Uh, you know, they're playing much better on the road these days, and now they're back home uh, where they have, you know, been okay 15, 13, and 2 this year. Let's get into the line history here for this first one on the board using pinnacle line movements. We have Dallas at minus 154, opened up at minus 149, now at minus 156. So seven cents of movement towards them. From a total side of things here, we have. A, a six and a half that's heavily juiced to the over. It's up as high as minus 140 at Will Hill, minus 131 at Pinnacle, and my bookies moved it to a seven, minus 135 to the under, and plus 115 to the over. So, uh, Stars come in off their third straight loss, 3 1 at the Rangers on Tuesday. This is their third game in four nights, and we faded them. We felt forced to fade them. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I didn't want to back the Rangers after the MetLife game, but uh, the, the Stars got. Hayes getting back after the birth of his child. He was exhausted, and they're missing Hockenpah and Nils Lundqvist, two defensemen that had become big parts of the team. Also missing Dodonov. They were also missing uh, Duchesne, but Duchesne has returned, and all these injuries happened the last nine days. I felt uh, forced to fade them on the minus one line, and that worked out. Uh, the Senators coming off an eventful three-game road trip. I saw them open with that ugly 3-2 loss at Chicago. Unfortunately, I was on them uh, on the puck line in that game, and they really let me down. You know, They were dominating the game through two periods, and just... Mm-hmm. Hard luck situation. Uh, then they went to Florida and they looked very good. They went at Tampa 4 2 before losing 3 2 in overtime at Sunrise on Tuesday. This is a completely healthy group. Take it away for Billy Friedrich on Dallas first period. Take it away for us here, Gokster. I've got no action on this game. No action. Take it away. What's your plan? Yeah, a lot of people I saw were betting, uh, you know, Dallas, like, you know, we got the paper for tomorrow. It's they, they got the better goalie going. This is the thing like with Corpus Salo, they signed him to that contract. and He's been really poor this year. Seven and seven on home, eight seventy-seven save percentage. You're gonna have Forsberg going. He's eight and five with a nine hundred one save percentage, two point nine four goals against. He's gonna be the. He's been the better goalie, and right now you got to write the hot hand with with this Ottawa team, and that is Forsberg. Um, with this team, though, first period both teams to score. I hate to to keep going back to it, but with a team like Dallas coming off those three losses, they're gonna come out guns a blazing here. Um, you know, you got Duchesne too from Halliburton, but. They'll probably have some family at the game too. Um, Ottawa's coming off of, you know, other than that game against Tampa guys where they came back and beat them, uh, they lost to Florida, Chicago, and Anaheim. So they're still, you know, they they need wins too. So I think this is, I want to take a full game over, but just because Ottinger's, you know, he's a, he's a strong away goalie, guys, 921 save percentage. And now they got Forsberg going. So I'm going to stay off the full game, Jim. But uh, first period, both teams just to score. I got that at plus 125. Um I just think it's going to be fire with fire early. That's just the way Ottawa has been playing uh, a lot, especially at home. Um, I'm not going to do the full game over, but both teams have scored first period. It's hit at such a high rate this year. Uh, I'm just kind of with the situation, two guys, and then both losing. I don't see it being a tight game, really. I see it kind of being a, a little more open up um, of a hockey game. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm looking here, Jim. First period, both teams to score. Um, what's, the, what's the juice on there? Yeah, plus 125. Plus 125. Uh, you know, D Rock saying Dallas losing three straight and being decent on the roads to Dallas spot. I, I don't disagree with that. That's a good point. You know, you know, with Ottawa looking good in Florida and coming back home. The the issue is uh it's possible that with Alfie and Jacques Martin behind the bench, that they're starting to play up to the level of their skill. They are, which would make them an uh, interesting team to back as the move as we move forward. They, they got three. I'm just looking quickly, Jim. They got three lines now, finally. They got Ridley, Craig, Norris, and Batherson. I'm seeing third line. Brady Kachuk, Pinto, and Tarasenko. Then Giroux, Stutzel, and then Matthew Joseph, who's been in and out of the lineup. So mm-hmm. this Ottawa team is the best I've seen. Like This is the best team they've looked all year, and it's not even close. Yeah. So, eh, And they're at home cutting off those lines. It's going to be a tight game, I think. I think there will be goals early, though, but as the game goes on, um, I don't see it being like a 4-1, 5-1 hockey game, that's for sure. Well, let's uh, uh, let's roll on. Uh, Von Polo says everybody check on your family. Can't get touch in touch with his uh, family. I think he's talking about the the cell service going on. Uh, sorry to hear that, Von Polo. So it's uh, cell service is down all over uh, the place. Uh, some sort of a solar flare. 
Uh, sorry to hear about that. So uh, uh, that's awful. So uh, I can understand the cat. comfort that gives you. I can understand that. So uh, let's roll on here. Uh, Slatsy says, imagine drafting Kot Konami over Brady Kachuk. Oh, come on. You want me to, here? but you want me to lose it, Slatsy? <laughs> you want me to talk about who we picked over Matthew Kachuk? I've already brought his name up. How many times? In no show in the entire world is Ole Uolevi talked about as much as he is here. And, and why should we, you know, have so much anger and hate towards someone who didn't succeed in life, didn't make it, didn't make it? And why do I want to, you know, roll up on him in a ski mask <laughs> so badly? I, so badly. I mean, I don't okay. well, Okay, let's move on. 7 p.m. Eastern, Colorado Avalanche, 35, 18, and 4, 13, 13, and 4 on the road at Detroit. Red Wings, 29, 20, and 6, 15, 8, and 5 at home. We're at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. Alexander Georgiev going up against Alex Lyon. Uh, Georgiev hasn't been very good. Uh, no. You could say that the forward group of the Avalanche aren't filled with defensive responsibility, defensively responsible players. That would be a valid thing. You know, that would be valid. But, uh, it's, he hasn't been very good. Alex Lyon, 15, 8, and 2, 2.83 goals against average, 9, 12, save percentage, two shutouts. I mean, he's coming back to earth, but he has given them some uh, solid play, some account, you know, some accountability between the pipes. A uh, Colorado power play, 23.4%. Detroit power play, 23.2%. So, I mean, keep that in mind that this Detroit power play is at the exact same level as the Avalanche power play with the snipers that the Avs have. And with Lucas Raymond and Moritz Sider and Larkin kind of leading the ship, uh, this power play will only get better as the years go on. 82% uh, penalty killing, 81.8% penalty killing for Colorado. So both teams have really strong special teams here. Uh, I have moved on this hockey game here. So first off, this total uh, is at another, just like that first game, heavily juiced to the over six and a half. Uh, opened up at minus 131. It's now at minus 133. And from a uh, money line perspective here, uh, Detroit sitting at plus 124. Uh, they've yeah. been bouncing all over the place. They opened up at plus 128. Uh, so I got in on them at plus 124. And uh, Slatsy says, yes, two, use, two useless stats. They avalanche 10 and 0 last 10 versus the Wings, and Panthers 11 and 0 last 11 on the road. Earl says value on the ring, Wings, but don't like them returning from a road trip in the Pacific Northwest, dog or pass. I had to move on the dog. I had to. Yes, you know, I don't want the Red Wings coming back from the road trip, but they started that road trip out horrifically. Uh, they were outscored 12 to five in losses, uh, you know, at Edmonton at Vancouver. Then they won five zero Calgary. Then they beat Seattle four, three in overtime. They're completely healthy. There's a few teams that are completely healthy for the first time all year. The avalanche aren't good on the road. We just watched them win one of six games on the road. And the only team they beat were the Washington capitals. Uh, you know, I don't see they're 13. They've won 13 of 30 games in regulation on the road. And I don't understand why I wouldn't take the dog here if this is a weighted coin flip. And I've been trying to stay away from these coin flip flip spots. But, you know, Colorado coming off their second straight win, third and four games, 3-1 at home over Vancouver on Tuesday. Their power play is not nearly the same without Nishushkin, the booze bag in front of the net. And Logan O'Connor uh, out, takes away some defensive responsibility. Uh, I, I just felt that this... The implied probability here forced me to bet on the Detroit Red Wings at this number at plus 124. And I did it. Take it away for us here. Go through Avalanche Red Wings. I, I don't blame you, Jim. I had it, I had it written down and I was going to fire it on this morning, but I just, something's, something's just pulling me back on this one. I don't know what it is. That road trip, um, I, I think it was Earl that brought it up there. That's, you know, coming back home here, Colorado. Oh, man, and then seeing sorry guys, it's just I'm having a hard time getting this one out. Colorado, like five one, yeah, they, they've had their number in the past, but you're so right though, Jim. With, with, with no Nachuskin, and listen to this: seven percent power play in the last two weeks for Colorado, seventy six or sorry, seventy six, twenty six percent for Detroit, and their power play for or penalty kill. Sorry guys, rough breakdown here, ninety three percent. So uh, everything is telling me to take Detroit too. What I wanted to take, and I actually might end up firing on this. Five of the last six road games for Colorado have gone under three and a half goals. 
three and a half team total Colorado last night. I can double check what it is right now, but it was minus 105 to have Colorado under three and a half goals. I think that's it's now minus 101, so it's moving the opposite direction. I just I have a hard I I, I want to say this is going to be like a four two three two kind of game for for Detroit, but something's really kind of just stank keep me off this game. I'm going to root on Detroit with you, Jim. I do think they're going to win. I just, for some reason, I don't want to bet it. The Colorado team total under three and a half. That's the one I, I feel stronger on. It's now minus one oh one two. I might, I might end up pulling the trigger. Detroit's just playing so well. The only thing I'd worry about is them just coming back off that road trip. And um, Colorado's just underperformed all year on the road. I think they're a better hockey team than, than kind of what their numbers are, but they, they're Gorgiev is going to have to start playing better hockey. You're talking about the, how they were playing to Jim defensively. They had Kemper guys. Everyone knows Detroit or Colorado. They had Kemper and he just was, had his best year of his whole career. And then they won the cup. Gorgiev can just, he, he's just not having a good year really. So um, everything is telling me to take Detroit. And uh, I have a really heavy, strong lean here on Colorado team total under three and a half. Yeah. I, I like, I like it. I like it and had to move on it. Let's move on. My best bet of the day has been cashing quite regularly and quite strongly. And it lost yesterday. Uh, You know, and I watched every goddamn second of it losing. And uh, it was just a roller coaster ride that I would choose not to be a part of. This is the best bet on the board here. And you guys know that I don't want anything to do with the Capitals. I want to fade them as much as possible. You know, that's the truth. The Tampa Bay Lightning, I have two spots on the board that I'm doubling up. And I'm doubling up for a score. I'm not doubling up, you know, on a minus 110 here. I'm doubling up to get paid in this hockey game. Mm-hmm. I'm on the Tampa Bay Lightning puck line at plus 130. I'm on the Tampa Bay Lightning first period minus a half at plus 145. If you're sitting there going, how could you possibly trust the Tampa Bay Lightning? They're 18, 7, and 3 at home. So they've lost two straight games at home. They've been outscored 13 to 4 over those two games. They lose 9 2 to Florida, and then they lose 4 2 at home to the Senators. You know, it, it's not good not having Tanner Geno out there. You know, he is, um, it brings a lot of toughness. And, and, and you know, Sergei Chev gone for the year, all, all that stuff. But, Washington comes in off its second straight win, 6-2 at home over the Devils on Tuesday. And what a glorious opportunity we have to fade Washington off of two straight wins. Uh, Earl Sports Bets leading Washington at this number. Uh, you know, They're playing better hockey than I imagine they would be playing. This, to me, is the single best bet on the entire board, in my estimation, uh, and it's just maybe a taint hair better than my other double up. First period minus a half plus 145. And God, Pinnacle's first period minus a half are so much better than Bet365. So, oh, yeah. Uh, and I didn't use to, like, I've been hammering first period minus a half. I used to all the time. But I, now I'm like, oh, good God. Thank God I got this uh, with Pinnacle. It's about 15 to 20 cents better than Bet365. So here we go. I'm doubling up on the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, and going to get the bag take it away ghoster capitals lightning well i'm with you here jim they're in a money line parlay with me here i got another game tied up two team banger for the guys here um one thing i want to bring up just washington they are playing well i i took uh the devils live when they were down 2-1 thinking they'd come back and that uh, they didn't they lost six to two against uh, washington there they're humming at 31 percent power play right now at washington so they that's the best i've seen that's in the last two weeks 70 percent on the road and then uh, Tampa Bay, they're 33% both last two weeks and at home. So if they get on the power play, both these teams really for that matter. So I would kind of lean over to uh, Vasilevsky should be better. His numbers, not nearly good enough. 11 and five, that's great, but he's got an 894 save percentage. Not like him, 890 in the last five games. But then Lengren on the other side, 897, 908. I think there's going to be goals here. Um, I took Tampa Bay in the money line parlay, just coming off those losses. I like that first period luck too, Jim. That makes a lot of sense. I could see them kind of getting up even 2-1, two, 1-0 two, one, one maybe. And then as the game goes on, though, I, I think Washington is going to – they're going to they're gonna play well here. But I, I don't – I think uh, I think the offense for, for the Lightning here, there's, they haven't had Juno for a while. 
also Ferivari. That's a key defenseman there for um, for Washington. He's out too. So long term, that's going to hurt this this Washington team. I, I do like Tampa Bay here, guys. Uh, money line parley, um, and I love that first period look by you too, Jim. And uh, if you look right now, I know Backstrom has been out for a long time and probably will never return. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kuznetsov, you know, also in rehab, and Nick Dowd. There were those. That's three of. That's your top three centermen yeah. coming into the season. Dowd, yeah. So, uh, arguably, I mean, you can put Strom in, in, in different spot, spots, but, um, uh, you know, there we go. Okay, so uh, that's a double-up spot for me. Now, Gokster's money line parlay is the two best spots on the board that I'm really attacking. So uh, we're right on the same page there. there. Right. Well, he'll, you'll hear who he's tying it together with. Let's move on to 7 p.m. Eastern. New York Rangers, 37, 16, and 3, 17, 9, and 3 on the road at New Jersey Devils, 28, 23, and 4, 13, 13, and 2 at home. We're at Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, Shes Durkin, if he gets hot here, how far can the Rangers go? Uh, they yeah. can go a long, long way if he gets hot. Uh, Nico Dawes, uh, I have listed, not sure if he is starting. No. He, you know, they, they have a problem in that they had the deal. Uh, very close to the Markstrom deal with Calgary, but Calgary wouldn't take on any of the contract from Markstrom. And there you go, gone. Uh, the Rangers are coming in off their eighth straight win, 3 1 victory at home over Dallas on Tuesday. So we know they're going to be without Blake Wheeler and Philip Heedle for a long time. Now, Artemi Panarin and Jimmy BC are out their day to day with lower body injuries. And Panarin's been spectacular uh, 32 goals, 75 points through 56 games. Earl Sports Bet says waiting for goalies. Uh, it says if Quick or Vanacek give me New York Rangers. I, I expect. It to be quick, honestly. I think this would be his. It just makes sense for it to be his spot. But again, uh, they have Shesty listed, and, and he's just getting hot. So, would you really want to not? I mean, I could understand putting him back in, but this would be the spot here. Uh, and Mikey Money says, "Fantastic Ranger spot." The Paner- the loss of Panarin and the need for the Devils to win has just kept me off of it. But but I do think that at this number. You know, I kept saying, why am I not on the Rangers? Why am I not on the Rangers here uh, with the way they're playing? Rangers are sitting at minus 106. They opened up right at that number. So there's been no movement there. And from a total side of things, we are dealing with a six and a half. Six and a half, and it's minus 105 to the uh, under. There's been no movement at all in the marketplace on this game. And I get it. It's a very difficult situation. There's our guy, Fat Wally, in the house, gifting a Pop Wally. Sports Radio membership. Wally, uh, thank you so much, Wally. In a week, fr- or I guess in nine days, we have our, our next horse racing show here uh, on Saturday. Uh, what is that? Saturday, March 2nd, I believe, uh, for the Fountain of Youth and the San Felipe and all that. So I look forward to capping with you on that day, Wally. Very, very much look forward to that. The Devils coming off their second loss in three games, 6-2 Washington on Tuesday. They outshot uh, the Caps 39-26 in defeat. You know, I, I think they're going to make a run here. Obviously, I've invested in them to make the playoffs. Uh, I'm off this game. Take it away for us here, Gokes, or what's your plan? Yeah, so Nico Dawes, if he's not going, I uh, this bet's done dead to rights. Vanacek, he shouldn't know. He shouldn't see the pipes for a long time. Uh, six, and they lost six two last game to Washington. Yeah, Nico Dawes allowed six. Okay, if you look at what he did before that, Jim, nine thirty save percentage, nine thirty save percentage, nine thirty save percentage, nine sixty save percentage. This guy's gonna bounce back here. I'm not even gonna question it. I think twice about it. And I didn't even know about that Panarin thing. They got Panarin and. And uh, another guy you brought up there just slipped my mind. But first period is where you're going to want to take the Devils here. Jump. I, this is this might be my favorite play of the night now. Uh, two, seven, and one last 10 games for the Rangers in the first period. So they've lost seven of their last 10 in the first period. Uh, Devils coming off a bad 6-2 loss. Yeah, their power play has been a little bit poor in the last few games. But wow. they, they got their key guys in the lineup here. Uh, Dawes is their guy of the future from what I'm seeing here. Um, Shesterkin should be a lower scoring game, I think. Uh, lower scoring game is where I would be looking to, but first period, uh, minus 110. I was hoping this wouldn't be too juiced, and it's not. So, um, I'll take Devils first period, and um, I'd be surprised if they don't bounce back here early. Nico does, especially. Uh, seeing the save percent, this guy was really good for Utica, too, guys. I, I've been waiting to kind of see this guy have some good starts, and uh, I think he's gonna, I'm gonna keep a close eye on this one, Jim, because. I think he's going to have a really good game here. Very interesting news and very good news. Even though Georgiev hasn't been good, I think it's very good news for the Red Wing Packers. Uh, And thank you to our chat. We had Coyne and Billy Friedrich just confirmed that Justice Anunen, 2018 third round pick uh, for the Avalanche, will be in between the pipe 6-4 goaltender here. Uh, He's had three games. He's not looked very good. They've won one of them. 
and he's been, you know, oh, he's been, I guess, good or above average to good for the Colorado Eagles in the AHL. I think that's great news. I think that's great news. That's big news. Good. Our chat's on fire today. That's great. Okay. Let's roll on a New Jersey first period money line. I'm going to cheer for that uh, in a big way. I, I've become uh, invested in this Devils squad. All right. Let's move on to the next spot where Gokster and I are in complete alignment. Now, in this spot, in the break, uh, Slatsy, who knows this Montreal team so well, was talking about how much losing Monaghan from the room hurt the Habs. He was a huge, huge piece in the room, and obviously, a, you know, having a six foot four center that could win faceoffs, you know, him and Johnny Hockey together, I thought were going to be monsters for a long time. And then Monaghan fell off, and then he resurrected his career in Montreal, and then of course he's been chipped out. So he said that he wants to fade the Habs as much as possible, you know. And I've been waiting for the right time to really attack them. I was afraid to attack them yesterday because of my uh, uh, d- uh, discomfort with the Sabres. I would have had them on the minus one Sabres anyway, so that would have been a push. I should have been on the Flyers minus one. Uh, in, in hindsight, of course, that, that easy to say that was a mistake. But here, one thing I love about the Penguins is they're a pretty predictable group. And one thing that I've always been able to count on this Penguins team led by Crosby is for them to be locked in against the worst teams in the league. I've always been able to count on that because of Crosby's accountability. Here you have a Penguins team off their second straight loss and fifth in their last six games, five, four in overtime at home versus Islanders on Tuesday. Everything's on the line for the big three. Malkin seems just heavy. You know, he just does not seem like he's, you know, skating quicksand, but here I think that the Penguins are going to ha- take no mercy on the Habs coming in on the second half of a back-to-back. Uh, I truly believe that. And yes, Gensel's out, and that hurts their offense. But I just, I, I just see this Penguins team attacking, attacking, attacking. And so I invested in that happening tonight. So I've got the Penguins on the puck line minus one and a half, a plus one fifteen. The two puck lines I took: the Lightning and the Penguins, one fifteen, one thirty, uh, respectively. Uh, the lines haven't moved at one point. Uh, it moves slightly the puck line for the Lightning, but it's come back. So the lines are just right back from where they started. Uh, Montreal's power play at nineteen point seven percent. The the best part of this Penguins team is their penalty killing. You know, eighty two point one percent. Then Pittsburgh's power play is weak, but Montreal's penalty killing is so bad. So here we go. Uh, this total is sitting at six. It's juiced to the over at minus one eleven. Uh, this opened up the over minus 119 so there's been a move towards the under uh, that tells me that you know the penguin the penguins are just going to play real tough alert tight hockey uh, there's been a move at pinnacle while the other books haven't had this huge move pinnacle has uh, pittsburgh's gone from minus 229 to minus 251 uh, you know what does that remind you of? It reminds me of the huge move that Pinnacle was ahead of everybody with the Flyers against the Blackhawks two nights ago. So this is the second half of Gogster's money line parlay, and I uh, am backing the Penguins. And you know, Tristan Yari, another part of this, is not seeing and the guys talking in chat about him being confirmed, and Billy Friedrich as well. Uh, he's been very good. He's been very good the last four or five games. Very good. So uh, I'm I'm I got Penguins first period minus a half at plus one thirty eight. I got Penguins puck line at plus one fifteen. Getting after it tonight, Gokes. They're taking away halves Penguins. Yeah, for me too, Jim. It's the it's the goaltending here, especially Yari and Allen. It's just night and day. Yeah, Allen's goals against is four point oh three on the road, and then four point oh three in his last five games. Um, Yari, on the other hand, two point two one two three seven. The uh, the issue I think with with Pittsburgh is defensively they they just suck. Carlson sucks. He just sucks. I'm sorry, but he just sucks. Uh, Pedersen and Latang Latang hasn't been performing. Their their defense and to see Yari with those numbers, he, he's playing damn good because they're they're not getting the outlet. Like they're just they're they're a, a, they're just a, not a good team right now. But with that being said, I do think they're going to get this the, the the job done. Everything you said they they beat up on these weak teams. Montreal though. 
um just saw they they kind of didn't give up but they were just they got just trounced i found in the second and third period jim i was watching some of that game so i i think they're gonna come out stronger in the in the first period here st louis was not too happy leaving the bench too i think they're gonna get themselves ready to go in the first but as the game goes on here i just don't think Allen's gonna be able to just keep up with yari here if, if yari lays an egg then I'll be extremely disappointed in the kid, but I don't see that happening here. I think goaltending is gonna is gonna shine here. Four two, kind of kind of game, maybe three two empty net or four two for the Penguins. So tied it in with Tampa Bay guys. Tampa Bay on the money line, Pittsburgh on the money line, plus one eighteen for you. We're right there. We are right there together. Unfortunately, uh, like old times, I did not take the minus one line. I I'm going for the score here. Oh baby. Let's roll on. Next up for us, a very contentious spot that's been talked about in the chat. 7 p.m. Eastern, Florida Panthers, 37, 15, and 4, 27, and 2 on the road at the Carolina Hurricanes, 33, 17, and 5, 18, 6, and 4 at home, PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Kachekov is starting to give them some confidence, you know, uh, and it's been a long time coming for these uh, Hurricanes between the pipes. So starting to look a little better. 905 save percentage, two shots, 2.46 goals against average. Bobrovsky's been good. Uh, you know, I, I really thought that we that he wouldn't be playing in the NHL by this point, you know, a couple years yeah. ago, but he, he's been good. 2.39 goals against average, 915 save percentage, three shutouts. Uh, you guys know I've got futures on the Panthers, and I'm a real believer in the heart and soul of this hockey team. Florida power play, 26% penalty killing at 83.2%. I, I'm, mark my words, the Jets special teams are going to cost them in the playoffs. Uh, when you see special teams like this, you know, you know, to me, uh, it's a team that can... Now, uh, you know, Hellebuck can have... Hellebuck can stand on his head. You know, we watched the Canucks and Thatcher Demko knock out the defending champion Blues in the playoffs because Demko stood on his head. You know, I mean, that stuff is possible. Carolina power play, 27.7%. Uh, you know, I, at one point, I didn't know if this, if they had the makeup to have a power play like this, but they do, and they're penalty game 84.1. They're just a very, very good, these are two very, very good hockey teams. I mean, they're just, you know, yeah. are there are there two better teams in the Eastern Conference? Uh, may, maybe uh, could you put the Rangers in a group with these two guys? I mean, these are these are just two elite hockey teams. Elite. Uh, Real Sports Bet says wrong team favored. Panthers are elite on the road and the best team in hockey. Give me Florida plus hundred all day long. Best bet on the board says Earl. That that my issue is just that you want to test yourself against the Panthers, and I I stayed off. You know, Panthers have won six straight. Uh, they're completely healthy. Uh, hurricanes are a real healthy group. I mean, it's just, I, as much as I agree, you know, that who wouldn't want the Panthers with a plus money spot beside them. But in saying that I, I'm not, I can't do it. Uh, the, the hurricanes opened up minus minus one ten. They're now minus minus one fifteen at pinnacle. There's been a five cent move towards them. And then from a, a total situation here, we have it at six at a pick them six at a pick them. And this opened up, uh, juice minus 115 to the over. So there's been a nine cent move to the under. Take it away here, Gokester Panthers at the Hurricanes. Yeah, two hot, the hottest teams in the in the league in the last two weeks, really. I think uh, maybe next to the Rangers, but six and one, five and two, 42 percent power play for the Panthers, Jim, in the last two weeks. They're just almost 50 percent. That's wild. This is it. I think this team might just go to the Stanley Cup final again. Uh, it really depends on Bobrovsky. Their backup's okay, but Bobrovsky, 944 save percentage, Jim, since the break, uh, 159 goals against. But then Kochekov, 927, 194. So you got two goalies with sub 200 um, goals against. So that's that's it smells like an under just right there. And then taking it over to home road splits, full season, 920 for Bobrovsky, 883, though, for Kochekov. So a little bit uh, advantage for Bobrovsky, full, full. I would give a little advantage to Bobrovsky here. Um, they got Rant and Anderson who've been Anderson's been out all year, but um penalty kills are 88%, 88%. That's that's Florida, 82%, 83% for Carolina. I feel like this is an under. Florida a half year have won four of the last uh four of the last four, uh three and two to the under for the last six games for the Carolina has gone under as well. I'm taking first period under short and sweet, guys, without confusing you too much. Um goaltending here should be strong. I wouldn't mind the full game either. Um uh, Sidewise, I do kind of lean to Florida here, but I think the the under is going to be where we're going to look here. Just two teams playing really well. Um, don't think there'll be a lot of ice to to make plays here. So first first period under Jim plus one fifteen, and also lean to the full game under. You know, I like it. I like it. Uh, these first period unders have been just 
hurting me for some reason. I just think that the, the importance of succeeding is is kind of elevated a bit for me. And uh, just the last five minutes or four minutes of the first period when I'm on under one and a half and it's one zero, it's just like uh, it's a sweat job. It's just not not uh, not very enjoyable. All right, let's roll on. Uh, five games left. I move on four of them. And I move on the next three straight, 8 p.m. Eastern, New York Islanders, 23, 18, and 4, 10, 11, and 5 on the road, St. Louis Blues, 29, 24, and 2, 16, 11, and 1 at home, Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Zemion Varlamov in net, it's tricky for him. Uh, is he confirmed, by the way? Do you have him confirmed? Yep, confirmed okay. Varlamov. Uh, it's tricky. You know, you, you you have maybe the greatest goaltender in, in the history of the sport behind the bench, and you don't know when you're going to play. It's really tough for Varlamov. Uh, you know, Sorokin is, you know, the head of the snake, and so it's not easy in this role. Uh, Binnington is looking good. 19, 15, and 2. 2.93 goals against average. 908, save percentage, two shots. Islanders power play 23.5%. My guy Noah Dobson, you know, BC boy, he's a monster. Proud of him. Their penalty killing is atrocious. Why? Pelican and Pollock are back. I don't, I don't know why it's 71.3%. You have, I don't get it. St. Louis power play 17.9%. Real deal prime taking Hasek over Wa. I would as well. Uh 17.9% power play. Would you? Oh, I he was probably one of my favorite goalies, the dominator, Hasek, just the how exciting it was stacking the pads and everything. Uh that's tough. That's tough. I, I didn't see a lot of Wa. I saw a lot of Hasek and Brodeur growing up. Didn't see a lot of Wa. I would, I would uh I would take him 78.8% uh, penalty killing for St. Louis, 17.9% power play. But this power play was anemic in the first half of the year. They're getting better and better and better. And Thomas is leading the squad. And also Krug, who they wanted to ship out, is stepping up. Now, here, this is extremely important. This is extremely important is, is the X's and O's in this hockey game. So, you know, I told you guys I'm trying to stay away from these weighted coin flips and these coin flips. And, you know, come baseball season, I'll probably have to open up to them. But uh, this is at six. And this opened up at six and a half. So obviously, uh, you know, expecting a, a tighter affair. Uh, these are not Islanders of yesteryear. Uh, you just can't. They're so different. They're just such a different hockey team. So uh, I can't trust them in that regard. Uh, St. Louis is now plus 111. So there's been a huge move uh, towards the Islanders. Uh, St. Louis opened up at minus 102. And I got in on them at plus 102. I, I really didn't think it would get. Uh, up to this point at plus 111. So uh, the Islanders snapped their three-game losing streak with a 5-4 overtime victory at Pittsburgh on Tuesday night. Zeke is dealing with a hand injury, but you know they're you know reasonably healthy. Uh, the Blues come in off consecutive losses at home. 5-2 versus Nashville on Saturday night, then 4-2 at least on Monday night. That's a perfect spot in my mind. You know, the perfect spot to to back a team that I trust at the Enterprise Center, and I've said it all year long, that's 16-11-1 there. Uh, so the Blues put Justin Falk on long-term injured reserve. Now that's a problem. He he's playing 22-14 a game because they play their top four defensemen so much. Uh, so that Tory Krug, Colton Pareko, and Nick Letty will each play 25 minutes tonight. Uh, and then the Scott Prunovich comes back. I think he's better than the 14 minutes a game he plays. But obviously they know better than I do. I, I kind of like him, but he's missed seven games. He's going to come back tonight. I don't like that Falk's not in the lineup. He's been playing well, but Krug has been stepping up. The power play has been stepping up. And if this is a weighted coin flip, I want a team I trust at home that's lost two straight at home, i.e. the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's the same shit. Yeah. So take it away for us here, Gokster. Uh, Islanders, Blues. I'm on the Blues at plus 102. Uh, yeah, this game here, Farlamov, I just don't think he's uh, he's had one start since the break, and he allowed three goals. He just doesn't have enough starts. And, and Sorokin, a lot of faults been on him, I think, this year. He's just mentally, I, I don't think he's all there right now this year. So uh, maybe the pressure of, of, of Wa coming, who knows. But uh, Bennington, he's been fine. 916 save percentage, guys. Both home home and road last five games. Uh, 34%. Good point in the chat there. Since Belleville's Bannister there. Um, I can't remember his first name, but Bannister there, Belleville guy. 34% last two weeks. Uh, and then they're going up against a 60% penalty kill in the Avengers in the last two weeks, 69% overall. So it's only getting worse. Their power play, though, is getting better for the Avengers, 20% now up to 28%. Um, I think there's going to be goals here, Jim. I think it's going to be a back-and-forth game. The Avengers, they're they're just not playing unders. Um, what else here? They're, uh, they've had a couple home uh, road games in the last 10 against Pittsburgh, 5-4. Tampa Bay – or, sorry, Toronto, 3-2. Uh, Montreal lost 4-3. Uh, 
I think they're going to put their they're going they're going to score goals here, but I think St. Louis is going to match them here too. Advantage Bennington and Net, so I would lean towards Bennington and that and uh, St. Louis, but I think there'll be goals here. Uh, St. Louis coming off two losses. Yes, Pittsburgh or the Islanders finally got a win, but it's against Pittsburgh who doesn't know how to close the team out. So um, first period, both teams are sorry. First period over one and a half, and then full full game over five and a half. Jim at plus one thirty. I uh, expect there to be goals here in, in this game with um, just the way these offenses are, 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 are playing and special teams is is quite an outlier here, especially for St. Louis. So uh, give me the full game over and, and first period over one and a half. Guys. I like it. Uh, I like it. We um, yeah, but anyway. are completely sort of, you know, on the same page uh, thus far. And I like that yeah. a lot. So uh, let's take that to the bank. Uh you know, I don't like the market moving against me, but let's moving go to towards, war. Moving towards the Islanders? Yeah, but let's go to war. Cool. All right, we move on to the next spot on the board, 9 p.m. Eastern. The Boston Bruins are a gutsy group with what a ton game. of character. A ton of what character. If you were a Bruins, if you're in the Boston, you know, Boston guy, and you're so lucky that you have this team that plays with all his heart. I don't think they have the skill level to have you know have a big season. Now Pasternak is top five, maybe. He's phenomenal. And Marshawn, I mean, he's now if Swayman looks plays like he did last night, I mean you guys are in big trouble or you'll just use Yulmark. But Hampus Lindholm not there and Grizzlick lower body injury. It's unclear if he'll be able to play, but if he can't, then Shattenkirk comes in. And we know what kind of defensive liability he is. Now he'll help the power play unit, but he's a defensive liability. The Bruins must be faded. Look, I know it's not easy, and they play great against the Oilers, but now they're down two of their top four defensemen. McAvoy got hurt last night and played and scored the winner in overtime. He's a hell of a hockey player. And they're really, you know, they're just you, – you, Boston fans are lucky to have a hockey team like this. I'm going to fade them tonight, and I'm going to fade them on Saturday night. I had made this bet before the hockey game was over. Last night, it wasn't available at Pinnacle at that point. It was just available at Bet365. I got it at plus 110, and I really like it. Now it's just a one-unit spot. Uh, right now it's at 106 at Pinnacle. Uh, this opened up at – oh, it's at 108. Sorry, this opened up at 106. This got down to minus 104 at 949 this morning. It also got down to minus 103 a couple times. Uh, money coming back in on the Bruins. And – um, and Kelly, I want to hear your thoughts here. Uh, our pleasure, Dominic. That's uh, you know, it's that's why we cap each and every game, even though the ones that we don't bet in, in, in NHL and NBA. So I'm glad to hear that, Dominic. But here, I, I'm going to back the Flames, and then on Saturday night, I'm going to back the Canucks. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Flames snapped their three-game losing streak with a six-three win at home over Winnipeg on Monday. And then at one point, you would say you could say, "Look, I don't want to." Uh, and Kelly McKinnon's living in Calgary. He's on Boston minus one and a half, not believing in his team. What you wouldn't want to be. I don't like backing teams on the final game of a homestand. But do you see where the the home the homestand ends for Calgary tonight? You know where they go on on Saturday, Edmonton. So they don't go in. They don't travel anywhere after the game. Come right back home. So uh, look, I, I'm on the Flames, and. No matter what happens, I'm going to back the Canucks on Saturday. Now, unless unless the Bruins lose like six zero or something like that, uh, or the Canucks win tonight in Seattle and the Bruins lose six zero, then maybe I stay off. So uh, here we go. Res Mob now a gold member as well. I love it, Res. Thank you, my friend. Earl Sports bet says wrong team favored. Flames plus twelve one twelve says bad spot for Boston. So here I am. Flames plus one ten. Take it away, Ghoster. Yeah, this puck couldn't be any worse. I was watching that game to 1.30 last night. Uh, went to overtime. Unbelievable. Probably the best game I've seen all year, Jim. But I got to think. the goaltending was so horrific. It, all those it, it, goals were rebounds that shouldn't be let go. That That's the only problem with the goals. It wasn't like, I mean, past this goal. How did the, how did the Oilers not get the puck out? You know, when you've watched hockey for so long, when they don't get the puck out, they're, you know they're going to score. You know the opposition is going to score. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, no, no, uh, absolutely. I, I I caught a lot of the end of that game. Uh, the the overtime, Swayman. I wouldn't say won him that that the, the overtime, but Jim he he made some key saves in that overtime. I I, I had a I took Oilers live, lost that one. 
but he kept him in that game. And then what happened on the other end? Skinner, guy doesn't know where the hell the net is behind him. He's fish out of water. And that goal McAvoy scored, he pretty much fell over and tipped the puck in. So um, I, I think Allmark going here tonight, uh, they got two of the best goalies in the NHL. When you look at two-headed monster, this is probably the best two in the NHL. Allmark sees 7-1 and 6. He's got a lot of overtimes. Uh, losses, uh, 917 save percentage. And Markstrom, he's got an 896. Um, power play completely dropped off for Boston the last two weeks. 8% power play, just not humming. And then 68% penalty kill. Uh, on the other side, though, Calgary, they're, they're not playing defensively at least. Uh, 79% penalty kill down to 71%. They're, they're scoring a little more on the power play at 18. But I think early, guys, the legs are going to be slow, if anything, though, for Boston. I got to think after that game, they... That was it going to go skating back and forth against with the Oilers. That's not easy for, for five periods or at least the overtime two or four periods. Um, no goal in the first nine minutes, 30 seconds. I didn't want to do it, Jim, but I had to do it. Plus 120. Uh, just see this game being just slow early. Slow early. They got that win too after those three losses. Calgary 6 3 win over Winnipeg on the 19th. So this is going to be slow early. Uh, I would expect Calgary to win this just being the team that's they haven't played since the 19th. And uh, that was, like I said, that was a wild game last night against Edmonton for, for Boston. So uh, I get why people are on Calgary. I'm just, I'm going no goal. First nine minutes, 30 seconds, plus 120. All right, let's roll on. Uh, let's roll on. We move on to 10 p.m. Eastern. The Toronto Maple Leafs, 30, 16, 8, 15, 6, and 6 on the road. The Vegas Golden Knights, 32, 18, 6, 9. 8 and 2 at home at T Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada. Martin Jones going to be in between the pipes for the Leafs. 10 7 1, 2.69 goals against average, 908 save percentage, and two shutouts. Aiden Hill, 14 5 and 2, 2.15 goals against average, 929 save percentage. We have a question here from Brian, just wondering how long Hampus is out. Uh, it's week to week. Week to week. So he, he won't be back with, you know, maybe, maybe we'll find out more in a week, basically, is the situation. Uh, Earl Sports leaning to Vegas and to the under. So a couple things here. Uh, now uh, Vegas is without Mark Stone. Uh, they're also doing the same thing that they did last year with great success with Jack Eichel. So Eichel, so this is how it works for those of you guys, because we talk about circumventing the cap, and this is how it works in the NHL. If you put a player on long-term injury reserve everyone should uh, do it then that money you can then spend right the money that's owed to but you have to stay under the cap so that's the trick right you have to stay under the cap though so then why can you spend eight million dollars over the cap it's because you don't bring the player back until the season that is over so that eight million doesn't come back on the books if jack eichel came back for the final game of the season his $11 million contract or, you know, the pro rate version would come back on the books and you'd be over the cap and, you know, you can't do that. So that's how they're circumventing it. So for instance, the Canucks are going to keep Carson Soucy out until the rest of the regular season, just so they can have, you know, 800,000 or whatever at the deadline. Uh, now, if Mark Stone misses 10, now they've got to decide what they're going to do about Mark Stone, but Jack Eichel is going to be able to come back and they're not going to bring him back. We saw Kucherov and the Lightning do it. We don't understand why this loophole exists, but it still exists. So now we have this Vegas team, and I like Nicholas Roy a lot. But Barbashev, Roy, I, I like Roy. He's a third line centerman on a Stanley Cup winning team. But now he's on the first line, and for some reason they're not playing Chandler Stevenson at center. He's with Wild Bill Carlson. So you've got you know Barbashev. Paul Cotter, Nicholas Roy, top six forwards. What's that do to your bottom six forwards? Now, Howden, Denisenko, and Kolasar are your third line. Morelli, Miramanov, and Amadio are your fourth line. Now, yes, you got Theodore back, and you have Alec Martinez, Pierangelo, and Theodore. That's great. But for me here, uh, yes, yeah, let's see. Um, the only way they'll bring Eichel back, this is from you know the insiders, is if stones out for the rest of the season but don't you do know that eichel's not skating and mccrinnan mccrinnan mccrimmon is lying there's no way they both come back it's impossible because they need to circumvent circumvent the cap so uh it's bullshit they're cheating 
So of course McCrimmon is going to say, "Oh, he's going to come back soon. He's going to cut." They're, they're, but whatever, they're they're fucking cheaters and Stanley Cup fucking winners. Uh, here though, Toronto's on the second half of back to back. They've won five straight, and Morgan Riley returns from suspension. So at a pick them here vegas comes off its third loss in four games five three at home versus nashville and look at nashville and the reason why i have to fade them is i don't think that win over vegas is i don't this is not a very tough team to beat vegas uh i will for sure tj my man uh sorry i'm a little behind just overwhelmed with the capping so look i took the leafs i took the leafs at minus 102 i took them uh you know it's not the great spot for them or anything like that but I took them at minus 102. Right now they're minus 101. Uh, the you know the market's just tightened up. This was uh, Vegas opened up at minus 116. They're now minus 109. Toronto opened up at plus 103. And they're now minus 101. So it's you know a slight move towards the Leafs. I'm on the Leafs here. Take it away, Gokester. Leafs Knights. Uh, yeah, that game last night again. Going back to that Arizona game, they were definitely ready for that one, Jim. Um... They, they uh, just between uh, with Matthews, uh, Knives, that team coming out right out of the gate, they were just they were ready for that game. This back to back here going to Vegas, they, they got Jones going. I was just trying to see when his last game was. He's 9 3 and 1, though. He's got a decent re- record, but he's got an 899 save percentage, 292 goals against Aiden Hill. He's a top five goal in the NHL right now. I'll, I'll say that. Um, I, and on the other side, they got all their defense, like you said, Jim, they got their key guys in. So, I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. I really do. Uh, 58% power play, though, for Toronto. 58. That is it's so uh, dangerous. It's it, that, that's so in the last two dangerous. Weeks. Yeah, it's insane. But here we go. 90% penalty kill is the Vegas Golden Knights in the last two weeks. 83% penalty kill at home. So it's not going to be nearly as easy coming off the back to back. I'm not expecting a lot from Toronto here. Uh, but then Vegas on the other side, they don't have the offense. So it smells like an under. I'm actually going to. I can't help myself. Another no goal, first nine minutes, 30 seconds. It's just slower game early here. I know they're getting Riley back. Uh, it's only going to help their defense, even though he's he is an offensive defenseman. Um, uh, no goal, first nine minutes, 30. No goal, first nine minutes, 30 seconds, uh, plus 125 here, Jim. Back to back, similar to the Boston spot here, guys. Just see this being slow early. Um, and uh, with the goalie here, with Jones. I think he should be okay. Uh, he should be okay early. And like I said, Hill, top five goalie in the NHL. So, I mean, I he's certainly playing that way. Uh, I, I'll give it to him. Say, certainly playing that way. All right, I'm on the Leafs at minus 102. And Gokster is – oh, sorry. Let me go over here. Gokster is on – oh, you didn't – I didn't tweet this, so I'm going to tweet it out. Okay, cool. Okay, you're going to add it. So what was it? Sorry. Plus 125, no goal, first nine minutes 30. Gogster, first 9.30, no goal. At Gogster 99, guys. All right, let's roll on. Uh, Mel saying best play on the board tonight might be Comfer anytime goal uh, tonight against the Avs. Uh, Comfer on the Detroit Red Wings. I'm on the Red Wings tonight. Ski like Profit that. in the house giving you a shout-out, Mr. Gogster. Let's Plus roll ski. on. Uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, Vancouver Canucks, 37, 15, and 6, 18, 10, and 4 on the road at Seattle Kraken, 23, 21, and 11, 11, 9, and 5 at home. Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Demko versus Joy Decord. Uh, Demko, 16, 11, and 10, 2.3. Oh, sorry, sorry, 30, 11, and 1, 2.44 goals against average, 9, 18, save percentage, 5 shots. Decord, 16, 11, and 10, 2.37 goals against average, 9, 21, save percentage, 2 shots. Uh, I love seeing them step up in between the pipes when Grew Bowers let them down so much. Vancouver Power Play at 23%, penalty killing 78.7%. Seattle power play 21.3% penalty killing at 79%. Take a look at the line history here for this one. A Nate dog saying nice and Robertson to score. Robertson's been really good. I, he's really, you know, they both scored gonna, less. you know, he's going to score some big goal. I, yeah. well, I shouldn't say, you know, cause the playoffs are tough, but I imagine he's got a big goal in him come playoff time. Uh, the, Canucks open up minus 119. It's now minus 125. Just two games left before we get into college basketball. Mikey Money hitting leadoff for us in college basketball. Good leadoff. Uh, So let me uh, get the total up here for this one. From a total side of things, we are dealing with a – sorry, get back to Pinnacle, dealing with a six. God, sorry about that. A minus 114 to the over. Uh, It opened up right there. So there's been no movement whatsoever. Uh, the Canucks coming off their third straight loss, 3-1 at Colorado on Tuesday, the final game of a three-game road trip. Remember, it opened up with that 10-7 loss at Minnesota. You have Susie and 
Dakota Joshua both out of the lineup for the Knucks. Kraken had their modest winning streak snapped in a 4-3 overtime loss at home to the Wings on Monday. This is the first time all year they've been healthy. And I'm very interested in this hockey game because of the Saturday night game against the Bruins uh, in Vancouver. But I've got no action on this one. Take it away for us here at Gokster Knucks Kraken. More I'm thinking about Jim, more I think Vancouver is going to just show up and smack Seattle here. I don't know why, but coming off those three losses, and now that they got to play Boston, you're saying on on Saturday, they're, they're, they're going to want to at least get a win in before that, I think. That's just me. That's just my thought. But cracking here, guys, 927 state percentage for their goalie, 919. Uh, uh, goals against is below 250. Both of these goalies are very strong. So you got a healthy team in Seattle. It's not going to be easy. My gut says they're going to just they they're, they're going to beat them, but. Um, you know, their power play has been 11% Vancouver since in the last two weeks, 72% penalty kills. So their special teams is, is a bit, is dropping off, which isn't a good sign, but, um, it's going to be a no play. I wouldn't be surprised though if Vancouver win this game, like, like on the puck line kind of thing. Um, but it, it's going to be a no play here, Jim. And we talked about it earlier. There's a belief that people know how to stop the Canucks power play now. And it's having two guys up high on Quinn Hughes. So we'll see uh, if Good they can point. make changes now and react to those changes. 10.30 wow. p.m. Eastern, the final spot on the board. Ron Crawford has come in and given us his spreadsheet play of the day, and I'm right with him. Now, this is the final bet I made. So, and I've been sitting with these games for a long time. Uh, so it wasn't that, you know, it's minus one at plus 106, and our guy Ron Crawford also on the L.A. King spreadsheet play of the day. UC Saros has not been very good. Uh, Cam Talbot uh, looked great to start the year and hasn't really followed through. He's been okay. I've got them listed. Nashville power play 19%, penalty killing 75.4%. LA Kings power play 22.1%, penalty killing 86.7%. Let's get into line history. There's been a move towards the Predators, but we'll start with the total. This is the final game on the board before we get into college basketball. This opened up at a pick em. There's been a four cent move uh, towards the over. And then from a money line standpoint here sorry i got this refreshed here we go from a money line standpoint we have the kings now at minus 149 so a real legit move uh towards the predators 11 cents basically towards the predators and the kings come off their four straight win five one at home over columbus on tuesday are are they going to step up here are they going to go on this big run that we've been waiting for I don't believe that the Nashville now that five two win over St. Louis. Remember, Nashville had been destroyed in two straight games before that. And then I don't think that Vegas is such a big deal that win in Vegas. You know, Vegas is decimated. So, you know, Nashville's a healthy group and a good hockey team. And you know, I've got them on the over 80, uh, 87 and a half points in, in a future bet. I'm gonna bet that the Kings keep rolling here. And if they win this, I'm gonna start betting them, you know, every game. As we move forward, uh, and a lot of people question whether the Kings are back. I get it. A lot of people don't trust the Kings. I get it. They're, you know, I get it. And I'm not. I'm certainly not ahead of the market uh, because they won four straight. If I had to cash with them four straight times, I could sit here and be out. You know, I, I knew this was going to happen. I told you. I'm on them here minus one. Take it away, Gokes. They're Predators, Kings. Yeah, since that new coach they brought in, Jim, they've been they've been pretty damn good for the most part. Um, you know, more I'm thinking about this, more I'm like maybe I should have taken the Kings. But what I did, guys, I took full game over. Um, Nashville here, a lot of overs, Jim, all overs. They've had one under against the Devils. It was four two, but other than that, it's they've had at least six. They've had more than seven goals um, in a lot of their games here. And going up against LA, uh, they seem like they're starting to score again. So. Short and sweet. I did go with the with the over. Pa, pa, sorry, the penalty kill. Get this one out. Last game of the card. Sixty six percent for the Nashville Predators. That's not. That's that's really poor. And then looking at what the Kings do, Jim. Thirty percent power play in the last two weeks. So if they get on the power play, the Kings are probably going to score. Uh, my worry would be maybe Nashville doesn't keep up. So I'm a little bit. This might be my. Uh, it was a last second change too, man. I had I had the Kings and I had to get the Kings team total over three and a half written down, but. For whatever reason, I did a 360 and went with a full game over six. I still think – I think Nashville's – they're completely healthy. I know – and then they're scoring short and sweet. And they got Red Light Riddick who's going. He has been solid. I can't call him Red Light right now. He's got a 917 save percentage, 255 goals against last five games. He's been really good at home too. So 
I'm taking full game over, but probably running away weaker ones on the card, Jim. Well, your I need your big money line parlay to cash. That's oh, I uh, love that one. That's I crucial that one. here, and I like it a lot. I like yeah. that look a lot. I love all the picks. It's just that last game. I, I'm trying to make a case like in the courtroom right now, and it's I'm not having a good case on on, on Nashville's side, and I can make a lot of good points for the Kings. So um, that's kind of why I'm a, a little uh, a little cold feeling that one. Well, let's review all action here. Our guy UPK Yash Yala, our guy Robert Cherry says JT Miller anytime goal. Jared McCann anytime goal. Philly Eagle Flyer is on the Predators money line Ooh. as well. Let's review all action here in NHL Gokster, and we need a day. Girl. Here we go. From Gokster side of things, he's on Florida Carolina first period under one and a half. He's on that Tampa Bay Lightning Pittsburgh Penguin money line parlay. I'm on both those on the puck line. He's on the Devils first period, minus 110. Dallas, Ottawa first period, both teams to score, plus 125. New York Islanders, St. Louis first period over one and a half. Uh, SGP with the full game over five and a half, plus 130. Boston, Calgary, no goal first, nine and a half, plus 120. And Nashville, LA Kings, full game over six and minus 105. His addition uh, was the, sorry, let me pull this up here. His addition was the no goal first nine and a half minutes in Maple Leafs. Golden Knights. Oh, yeah. So then uh, for me, I have I start my card with the Detroit Red Wings at plus 124. Curious to see if that has changed at all with the announcement of – oh, I've got all my college basketball set up. Okay, I'll let that go. Actually, you know, I can check on the actual book. How about this? Um, uh, yes, it's moved 10 cents. The Wings have gone at bet three side from plus 120 to plus 110. So we'll take that. Uh, so – I got the Red Wings plus 124. I got Lightning first period minus a half and full game puck line. So that is crucial. Crucial. Then I have the Penguins first period minus a half plus 138 and Penguins full game puck line. Those are the most important two bets of the night for me. I got the Blues at plus 102, the Flames at plus 110, the Leafs at minus 102, and then I close up shop with the Kings minus one at plus 106. So nine bets for me, the two double ups. You know, I got uh, 40 five percent of my action on just the pittsburgh penguins and the tampa bay lightning gokster excellent work my friend we move on to college basketball thank you for sharing your hard work with us we're going to be in san antonio in no time my friend and it's all crown season the thoroughbreds are on their way uh as well which i'm very excited about we'd love to have you involved absolutely uh, gokster my man uh, please support gokster on x at gokster 99 gokster any last words for the capper sport in the show Oh, just thank you, Jimmy, for having me as always, buddy. Enjoy capping this card with you. Uh, everyone in the chat, best of luck with their action. And uh, I got some golf picks, guys. Mexico Open's going on, so check me out there. Gokster99, always got the golf action. And uh, best of luck with your picks, guys. Be good. There he is, Mr. Gokster in the house. We got Smooth Balls play of the day in. Get that copied and pasted for our guy, Jay Smooth, who will also be in San Antonio with us all right let's move on to college basketball and bring on the star of last call he's hammered the board and i'm ready to rock with them i was very hesitant uh, yesterday which bothered me there's red girl in the house great to see you a red girl i was very hesitant uh yesterday for i don't can't quite understand why and made me uh really itching to get back here and back with you guys and, and hammer the board so we got the right capper for the job high volume high intensity high profits please welcome from the dirtiest of chesters rochester new york please welcome our guy mikey money mikey how are you what up jimmy shout out to the chat shout out pub sports radio can't wait to dig in and get it done today let's go here we got the uh the bridge to the weekend that is thursday best uh best time of the week to get ready for sports it is and um very important uh, for me to succeed here. This is also in out uh, with my out local twenty five percent in out day uh, following action on Thursday evening. So uh, extreme importance, Mikey. Let's get to work. First off, let's review some action from Cappers in our chat just to get us rolling. Morgan Spooner is on Northwestern minus 12 and a half. He's on the Grand Canyon Seattle Moneyline Parlay at plus 100. Those are his favorite two spots on the board. Uh, Jay Smooth just gave us Towson minus six here. Uh, Lee Featherchak in the chat. He's giving us Moorhead, Western Illinois, first half under 59 and a half in Eastern Kentucky minus six and a half. 
let me make sure I've got that uh, here. Then uh, Kent Davies, uh, this is what he sent me uh, this morning. He he said because uh, he's with me on Calgary and he's on he heavy with him. He's heavy on this one. Idaho plus ten and a half says Northern Colorado in a look ahead spot. So we're going to talk all about that. Then uh, Billy Friedrich, the pig milk play of the day, going for three <laughs> in a row. Pig milk play of the day. It's Arkansas, Little Rock, Southeast Missouri State, under 150. And the spreadsheet play today is Northern Kentucky. Northern Kentucky. So let's get right to work, Mikey. We start 6.30 p.m. Eastern, North Carolina A&T Aggies, 7 and 20, 5 and 9 in conference at Stony Brook Seawolves, 14 and 13, 7 and 7 in the CAA. We're in Stony Brook, New York for this one. We have the Aggies on in the throes of a losing streak. Uh, pretty ugly one as well. Five straight losses. Seven of their last eight they have lost. And they haven't played Stony Brook this year. So this is no... There's no revenge. There's nothing of that sort. Uh, they're coming off a 62-54 loss on Saturday night at home to the Delaware Blue Hens. And they, again, did not look good. 38.2% from the field, 18.2% from three. Uh, put up 54 points in the loss. North Carolina a and really struggling right now. On the other hand, the Seawolves have lost two of three. They're coming off a 84-61 loss at Monmouth. Really ugly loss against a team that's you know not very good in conference. Monmouth, uh, well, eight and six. Stony Brook, seven and seven. But a real ugly loss for Stony Brook. They shot 34.9% from the field and 18.2% from three. Uh, this must be a bounce back spot for them. Must it? We'll ask our guy, Mikey. Let's discuss the line history. We're using Bet Online opening lines. Uh, don't forget about our Bet Online link on our website, pubsportsradio.com. If you hit the link and use it for new accounts only, they'll give you a 100% bonus up to $1,000. And that's just a regular money. It doesn't have to be Bitcoin. Uh, we have Stony Brook opening up at minus 14. Uh, they're now minus 13 and a half. I mean, that's a huge spread for you know, a very average basketball team from a total side of things. We are dealing with a one thirty five and a half. Uh, this, the floor is dropped on this. This opened up one thirty nine and a half. got up to one forty yesterday afternoon. And since then it's just dropping and dropping and dropping, just continually drop. Uh, this was at one thirty seven two hours and 15 minutes ago. So, uh, it continues to drop coin says Stony Brook spot here. I agree with that, but that's a lot of points. That is a lot of points here. Uh, let's take a look at the cash flow then for this spot. Sorry, let me move over to NCAA basketball. And here we go. We have 81% of the tickets and 74% of the cash on NCAA. &T. Wow. That's a lot of people believing in the big dog. 52% of tickets, 57% of cash on the under. And the market moving you know, quickly. Take it away for us here. Mikey Money, your first spot on the board. Aggie Seawolves. Yeah, we're all over this under. You know, this NCA and T team has to have one of the worst offenses in college basketball. Uh, you know, not to say that Stony Brook's really doing much better behind this thing, but seven straight unders for NCA and T. I got to say, we capped that thing right about the beginning of that under train, and they've been cashing with it pretty much ever since. So, no reason to get off the well at this point here. NCA and T's offense is atrocious. Uh, you know, you look at this last game they played against Delaware, they scored 54 points. Uh, they got the UNC Wilmington team. Now, UNC Wilmington, one of the better in the conference for sure. They only score 54 points as well, and they lose by 19. So no question about it. They're averaging 66 points a game in terms of their season on the average. But when you look at the way these two teams play head-to-head, -head, uh, granted, they've got just recent experience here. I think it's three, uh, might be four games that they've played now head-to-head. -head. They're averaging 128 points. So this isn't a uh, iron sharpens iron type of situation. This is bad teams playing bad teams, and they don't score on offense. The average score we're seeing is 68 to 60. Uh, the fact that it's dropping tells you everything you need to know about this game. We've been on it. We're going to keep running with it. And that's how we're going to kick this card off. You got it. Uh, you got it. And uh, our guy, Billy Frieder, giving you a shout-out for that uh, UNCW, <laughs> NCA, and T under last week. Uh, that Smoked that under. We're under by like out. 20 points, I think. And our guy, Smoking Tree, giving us Virginia Tech minus 2.5 is a bag today so the best line we can give you is 136 at minus 110 can you beat that uh that sounds about right let me uh just double check yeah that's good 
All right. Well, that's what you have received. The under 136 and minus 110. We are off and racing here in college basketball. Let's move on to the next spot on the board. And we stay, excuse me, stay in the storied CAA conference uh, for this spot. Uh, Next up for Mikey is the Charleston Cougars, 20 and 7, 11 and 3 in conference. Uh, looking very strong at the Delaware Blue Hens, nine and five in conference here. Uh, these are two of the top four teams in the conference. Delaware, two games back of Charleston, UNC Wilmington, and Drexel in between. Uh, speaking of Charleston, they are rolling, absolutely rolling right now. Uh, they have now won five straight games. They've won seven of eight. And they also have not played the Delaware Blue Hens. So this is no, uh, there's no Rebenga or anything here in play, but important for seeding for the conference tournament. Uh, Delaware bounced back from that 73-67 loss at Elon uh, by beating NCANT on Saturday, 62-54. Uh, they have won four straight themselves. Let's get into the line history here for this one, uh, God, sorry, let me make sure that I've, I have this set up better uh, as we move forward. Sorry, it was on Pinnacle, so let me move over to Bet Online. We have Delaware right now as one and a half point dogs. Uh, they opened up as one point dogs quickly, went to two, then back to one and a half. So we have a half point move to Charleston, half point move to Charleston, and then from a total side of things. We have it sitting at 155 and a half minus 105 to the under. Uh, this opened up at 151. So we've had a huge move to the over. Four and a half point move uh, towards that over. And speaking of that, only 19% of the tickets are on the over and 59% of the cash. So huge bets have come in on the over, respected bets by the books. Then 68% of the tickets and 96% of the cash is on Delaware. And the line has moved a half point towards Charleston. 32% of tickets, and just 4% of the cash is on Charleston. Take it away for us here, Mikey. Cougars, Blue Hens in Newark, Delaware at the at ye old Bob Carpenter Center. Floor is yours. <laughs> Shout out Wine Time Sports talking about that UNLV spot there. There's some teams that are good at revenge, and there's some teams that are not good in a rematch. And we'll talk about a couple of those today as well. Uh, Charleston, I'll lay on this one here. They're looking to get back to form. They're going to go look for their second straight championship in the conference. And uh, if you look at how these two teams match up, neither one of them played world beaters last time around, right? Uh, Delaware played NCA&T, but NCA&T, we just talked about it. They're terrible. They only scored 62 points against NCA&T. The other side of things with Charleston, you know, 65-57 against that William & Mary team that we talked about being depleted in terms of their offense. I think both these teams were looking ahead to this game here and uh, down to the X's and O's for this one here. One team's owned the other team. We got nine straight wins for Charleston over Delaware. Uh, I think we see it cut to 10 today. The way these two teams match up, Charleston's averaging 80 points to the 74 for Delaware, uh, 32.7 from the three to 34.9. So they got a little disadvantage there. But then there comes the old foul number, 72 to 70% advantage to Charleston. Tight games, one team's playing with confidence, continuing to run here. 20 and seven, trying to go 21 and seven in the conference and uh, get that top seed all locked up. So everything to play for, for both these two teams, they both had this date circled and Charleston's going to come out victorious on the road. Well, let's uh, get you your Charleston. I'm just taking the money line in this one. This is a money line play for me. All right. Well, let's move over to money line and see what we can offer you. Mikey moving on Charleston here and Capper's in the chat agreeing with the spot. Come on. Here we go. Uh, money line. Sorry, taking a second here. I don't know. Okay. I got a minus 118. I don't know if anybody can beat minus 118. Billy Friedrich says minus 123, a bookmaker. I have a feeling 118 is going to be the best number, and that's fine. Yeah. Sorry, you know, this, I had a... be, this is that situation where you go by the math again, right? It's 10 cents for a point, so one and a half points should be 15 cents. On a minus 110 means it should be minus 125. The value for this thing lies in that minus 118, uh, not fucking around with that point. This isn't a spot where it's not taking the point and a half because I just want to get the money line in case it's a one-point game. This is a situation where the value says take the money line here. It's the value in terms of what the cost of that point and a half is in relation to the money line. Uh, We can get you a minus 120. 
Did you say you got minus 118? Yep. FanDuel's got a minus 118. You got it. Charleston minus 118 for you, uh, Mikey. Let's get back over to point spreads and move on to your next spot on the Roll. board. Next up for you, uh, we head to the Sun Belt. App State, 22 and 5, 12 and 2 in the Sun Belt at Old Dominion. The Monarch, 6 and 21, 2 and 12 uh, in the Sun Belt. Chartway Arena has not been good for them here in Norfolk, Virginia. Let's take a look at the line history and the cash flow here for this spot. Oh, by the way, a game that we're going to be talking about here with Mikey shortly is the levels play today from Tone Miggins. That's Oral Roberts' money line. And Joseph Thompson's best bet is in St. Thomas, North Dakota State, over 137. Let's get this uh, set up here for the App State ODU spot here. Sorry, a lot of games. On today's card, Gabby, those might be up. first half cost calculations you're looking at there. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, let's roll here. So, uh, App State winners of three straight. Uh, they lost at Texas State 63 56, and then you know, beat Toledo at home 109 104 in double overtime, beat Marshall by 15 at home, and then beat the Raging Cajuns by 12 at home. Now they travel on the road and they face an old Dominion squad in the throws of a five game losing streak. They've lost eight of nine. In fact, if you look at their last uh, 17 games, they've only beaten Marshall. That's it. Beat Marshall at home and on the road. Other than that, they've been losing and they play app state again next Wednesday. So in six days, they're going to play app state again. So we're going to, and, and that one's at app state. So that's, Great. So we can talk about it now and then revisit it here again. Uh, let's take a look at the line history here for this app state spot. We're going to start with the spread. Uh, here we go. Uh, from a, a spread perspective, app state is sitting at minus eight and a half. There are nines out there. Uh, this is eight and a half. This opened up at nine and a half. We have a one point move uh, towards old dominion, one point move towards old dominion. And it's wild because only 6% of the tickets are on Old Dominion and 4% of the cash. So a big money coming in on App State. 90% of the tickets and 84% of cash is on the over. 90 and 84 on the over. And when we get to the movement here, we're sitting with a 141 and a half. Uh, this opened up at 140 and a half. It got up to 144 and a half. And it's come back. So... We went over the cash already, so let's hear how Mikey's moving on this one. Sun Belt, Fun Belt, Old Dominion at home to App State. Old Dominion is not a good team. I mean, <laughs> evidenced in their record, four straight losses against the spread, five straight straight up losses here. And we got cute yesterday with Marshall. We tried to kind of figure out that spot where, uh, you know, maybe maybe here's the situation where they can take advantage. App State's the number one team in the conference. Uh, James Madison, the number two by a half a point behind them. James Madison's big win yesterday puts the boot to the ass here for App State, pushing them out the gate to try to get this thing moving. I don't see it being a letdown spot, 12-2 and two in the conference. And, uh, yeah, the fact that they've got this team on deck twice, I think, for them, kind of gives them that that uh, confidence to know that they're going to lock down this conference. Eight and a half. We're not getting cute. We're not going to overthink this thing here. This is one of those spots where um, this is just the better team. We saw it yesterday. There's a huge gap between the haves and the have-nots in this conference. App State very much falls under one of those half situations. Seven straight games following a home win that they picked up the W. And uh, Old Dominion is just not good, right? So you look at it here. And uh, the one thing I think Appy State's opportunity to get better for is on their defense. Um, you know, they can certainly close that up on the road and figure it out. But um, I like their scheduling position here, knowing that they've got kind of the wind at their back and the opportunity to get it done. You've got an offense ranked 64th, a defense ranked 50th in all of college basketball against an Old Dominion team that's reeling. And uh, App State to get the job done for us, minus eight and a half. Minus eight and a half. Let's see if I can get that down. Yeah, the best I can give you is minus eight and a half, minus 108. So Sounds good. Uh, you are locked in. All right, let's roll into the next spot on the board. Perfect, all set up, and let's roll. We move to the A Sun to Baptist Health Arena in Richmond, Kentucky, home of the Eastern Kentucky Colonels, 15-11-10-2 in the A-Sun. Looking very strong. North Alabama Lions coming to town, 13-14, and 7-6 in conference. So Eastern Kentucky leading the way. Stetson is one game back, and North, North Alabama three and a half games back. Northern Alabama 
coming off losses in two of their last three. They just lost to Austin P. Austin P's in that group just ahead of North Alabama. Uh, so they've lost the two of their last three coming off, uh, off that loss at home to uh, Austin P. Uh, Eastern Kentucky lost at Stetson, 87-79, came back and beat Chicago State and followed that up with a 75-65 win at Bellarmine, uh, who are at the bottom of the conference. So uh, here we go. North Alabama versus uh, Eastern Kentucky. And they lost uh, at home to Eastern Kentucky, 81 to 72. We heard Mikey talk about which teams uh, step up in, 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 in revenge situations. Well, is are these Lions uh, one of them? Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We have... Oh, sorry. Come on. Show me your. Here we go. North Alabama right now at plus six and a half at minus 105. This opened up at six and a half, got up to seven and a half, then to seven, and it's right back at six and a half. It's right back where we started. We have had five cents of juice towards Eastern Kentucky, but we're right back uh, from Wentz. And then from a total scenario, we have a 155 and a half. This opened up at 154 and a half, now at 155 and a half. And then from a cash flow standpoint, you have 47% of the tickets and 72% of the cash on North Alabama. 50-50 ticket count on the total and no information on the cash with the total. Take it away for us here, Mikey. Lions, Colonels. I think this conference has course correction coming up today. So I see Billy Friedrich talking about stats in um, you know, Billy, shout out if you get on that one here. I, I chose between these two that I thought uh, North Alabama was the better of the two teams to come up with the win. But I see both these teams losing Stetson uh, Stetson and this East Kentucky team here, Eastern, East, whatever, uh, Eastern Kentucky. I get it. They're eight and two their last 10, certainly running hard. Uh, you look at this North Alabama spot, six and four in their last 10. North Alabama has been very good to us. This is another one of those teams that we found the spot to get in there and capitalize on and ride with them. And if you're curious why we, we play in the mud with the pigs, let me tell you this one right now. A-Sun, home favorites, home favorites in the A-Sun. We talked about Big 12. We talked about Big 10s. We talked about SECs. The mid-majors, A-Sun, home favorites when they got a total that's greater than 150 and a line that's bigger than a minus six. They're one in nine in those spots. One and nine. They don't know where to put these numbers. And the over, by the way, is eight and two. They're going over by 10 points a game. The one and nine on the total is going uh, off the mark by 10 points a game. They don't know. Books have, this is where your advantage lies. This is evidence to the number. And this is a spot we're taking North Alabama here. We're going to jump on that six and a half. Do I expect them to win the game outright? Probably going to be a tight spot for them to get the job done. But again, I expect course correction, just with, not just with this team, but Queens College, Queens College, the reason I didn't move with Queens College and I chose this game is because Queens College is terrible on the road. Uh, they're a bad team in the conference and they're bad on the road. Uh, I thought this is a better opportunity for a team that's been good to us here. You can go by the numbers and look at it as well. North Alabama coming off a better performance. They shot 79 points against Austin P. Uh, field goal percentages at 49%. 14 of 16 from the free throw line. You know that that free throw percentage is ooh, so important when it comes to these kind of spreads here and getting on these points. Uh, Three-point shooting, 36% uh, on three-pointers, averaging 21.3 attempts a game. So they're not afraid to throw it from deep, and they're capitalizing on that. That gives them the ability to hang in there with any team. And again, one and nine in the ace on home favorites with a total over 150 and a line minus six or better. Give me this dog here in North Alabama with the six and a half. Uh, let's get, I, actually, I see a seven, and a seven and a half now. Do you actually see a seven and a half? Bet Rivers has a seven and a half at minus 112. Wow. Okay. We'll give you that one because there's give no seven back. and a half here. Plus seven and a half minus 112 for you with the North Alabama Lions. All right. Let's roll on. Uh, next up, we have the Grand Canyon Lopes. We head to Wisdom Gym in Stephenville, Texas, home of the Tarleton State Texans, 18 and 7, 11 and 3 in the WAC. Grand Canyon leading the way in the WAC, 14 and 1 in the Western Athletic Conference, and two and a half games ahead of Tarleton. And then Tarleton's two and a half games ahead of the team in third. So these are the two top spots here. And if you remember, we had in one of my breakdowns, it's, it was the worst night I've had in college basketball this year. I'm, you know, I'm up just a little over 12 units 
on the season, but you, you might remember the Tarleton State Utah Valley spot, Mikey, because we had Utah Valley. Utah Valley was up 15 at the half, and then Tarleton yep. State dug in and won the second half by what 30? Uh, they yeah. just completely dominated Utah Valley, and that was that was the you know that was a, I remember that night like it was yesterday. That was when we yeah, lost. We were with texting Utah. back and forth about how dirty they did us, and I was like, "It's not quite over." And you were like, "Oh, it's over." <laughs> but we we lost to Utah with Utah. Remember in triple over time? Was it triple over time? Right? Yeah. We lost. We had the plus yeah. five and a half, and, we, and they lost by six. So that was a uh, close to a breakdown evening. Uh, Tarleton is in the throes of a winning streak, as are the Lopes. Uh, both teams are winning right now. Uh, Grand Canyon is has won seven straight, and they played Tarleton State, and they destroyed them. I mean, we're talking destroyed them. They beat Tarleton State at home, seventy-four to forty-eight. Uh, Tarleton State put up nineteen points in the second half. They shot thirty-one point seven from the field and twenty-seven point eight percent from three. It was an absolute disaster. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. Eight o'clock start here. Very interesting spot. We have, oh, sorry, let me get it up here. Uh, right now, uh, Tarleton is at plus five. Uh, this opened up plus five minus 115. It's now plus five minus 110. Uh, no movement uh, for Tarleton. And then totals wise here, we have it sitting at a 141 and a half. Uh, this opened up at 141. So a half point move to the over, very little there. And not a ton of information from the cash flow, none on the total. But we do know that 61% of the tickets and 70% of the cash is on Tarleton State. Are you on Tarleton State? Take it away, Mikey. Lopes, Texans. I'm going to the team that's already shown the ability to put boots to ass on the other team here with this Grand Canyon spot. Grand Canyon's got two losses this year. We'll talk about one of the teams in a little bit that they took a loss to to start this season off or get things rolling here. And uh, best opportunity as far as buying low and selling high, you know, you look at Tarleton, you say, oh, it's the revenge spot. Remember, I talked about the difference between revenge and rematch. This is a situation where it's the road team in the rematch, 12 and 8 in those spots. Not a tremendous edge, but an edge nonetheless. We're just looking for an edge over 60%. And uh, again, the fact that it's a rematch, not a revenge, is because they kicked the shit out of them the last time out. This is going to be, I think, a similar situation. There's a group of teams that do very well in these spots here, and Grand Canyon is very much one of them. Then as far as the buy high, sell low situation, yeah, Tarleton, it's a revenge spot. They're at home. They got all the reason to get it done in the world. They've been covering spreads like crazy as of late, and we're getting this Grand Canyon team two and three in its last five against the spread out there. This number keeps coming down and uh, gives me an opportunity to get excited about it here. I see four and a halfs, and I see some fives. Um, I'll go with the five. The five is minus 110. The four and a half is minus 115. Short sweep to the point. This Grand Canyon team is firing right now. They're scoring 73 or more in five straight games. You just talked about that blow off out there, 74-48. They got 22 of 23 night games against non-conference opponents. And this Tarleton State team, uh, not impressive in their last go at it. 33-28 lead going into half. Uh, I'm sorry, down 33-28 going into the half. They had a rally 52-45 to come up with a two-point victory in that game. And, uh, you know, I think that's a situation where they're just running out of gas. They've tried to run with the big dogs. Now it's time to stay on the porch here. Uh, we're going to go Grand Canyon and uh, get this minus five. Minus five at minus 104. The four and a half is minus 113. Oh, I think the four and a half then. I didn't realize it was that low. Minus four and a half at minus 113. Gift the Cartel says Tarleton beat Grand Canyon last home game by 19. Yes, that was last season. Oh, it's minus 112, a bookmaker. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, even better. Guy, Billy Friedrich, our guy. Friedrich, our guy. All right. So uh, move on the Lopes for Mikey Money. Let's move on to 8 p.m. Eastern. So we've heard from Tone Miggins. The levels play of the day is Oral Roberts Moneyline. Oral Roberts Golden Eagles, 11 and 15, 5 and 8 in the summit. At the Omaha Mavericks, 13 and 15, 6 and 7 in the summit. These teams are at the bottom of the ledger here, uh, all looking up to North Dakota and South Dakota State. Oral Roberts has lost four straight. They lost two on the road, St. Thomas, Minnesota, San, uh, South Dakota State. Uh, then they lose at home to North Dakota State and North Dakota back to back here at home. 
Omaha has lost three of their last four. Uh, they lost at home to South Dakota State in overtime, 85-77 on Saturday. So it is Oral Roberts heading to Omaha. And they have played before. Oral Roberts beat Omaha at home on January 25th. Beat them 74-67 to as three-and-a-half-point favorites. Omaha did not shoot well there. 39.7% from the field, 26.1% from three in that one. Take a look at the line history for this uh, Oral Roberts spot. Oral Roberts sitting here uh, at plus three. Plus three. Uh, this opened up plus four. There's been a full point move towards Oral Roberts. Then from a total scenario here, we have it sitting at 155. Uh, opened up at 155 and a half. Got down to 154 and a half. Now sitting at 155. And then when we get to the cash flow, no information on the total, but we know that, oh, shoot, that was the Grand Canyon one. Sorry, uh, no information on the total, but 19% of the tickets and 39% of the cash is on Oral Roberts. So you have 19% of the tickets, the line moving in their direction. Very, very, very interesting spot. Billy Friedrich says he really likes Omaha money line here. Says some league home court advantage is a big deal. Gifted Cartel saying he's going to take Nebraska Omaha first half money line. Take it away for us here, Mikey, Oral Roberts at Omaha. Oral Roberts owns Omaha. They've won uh, nine straight games against Omaha. And uh, the big difference for these guys, this is the Jimmy the Bag trend in effect. We talked about it a couple, maybe uh, two weeks back. The back-to-back -back home losses as a favorite. Now you're rolling in on the road. You're 119 and 64, confidently beating these teams up. You're covering the spread by a margin of over two points on an average line of one. So. Uh, average score we're seeing 72 to 69 in those spots, outright dog upsets on a team that continues to win against the other. I got Oral Roberts and I got plus three and a half and I see the uh, money line at plus 140. So the big difference for me in this game here is going to have to be defense. You know, Oral Roberts defense ranks 290th nationally. That's not going to get the job done by any stretch, but uh, I think that's a team that comes in with the confidence. You see the cash pouring in on Omaha. You see, if anything, reverse line movement against them there. The money line continues to shrink as we uh, see the cash pouring in on this Omaha team because of the perception of what their road record's been early on the team uh, season. They're two evenly matched teams here and got to take advantage here. We're coming in off those back-to-back -back, uh, back -to -back losses. In fact, they've got four straight for this Oral Bob team. Not only do they cover the spread, they get right with the outright here, and uh, we're going to capitalize. I'm going to join you on this one here. This makes a ton of sense. Uh, by the way, Coin found a better number for you on Grand Canyon over at Circa, minus 110. Thank you. Every penny counts, so thank you oh, for yeah. that. And then uh, Oral Roberts plus three at minus 108, but we can get you a three and a half. Let's also uh, line shop for the best money line spot for you. So we have a three and a half at minus 108 uh, still available. That's at Heritage. So let's start there. Get you the um, plus three and a half at minus 108. And then Mikey double dipping here with the money line as well. So from a money line standpoint, let's get that up here. And we have the plus 139. Did you say there was a plus 140? Yeah, there's a couple 140s out there. Bet MGM points bet. You got it, uh, plus 140. So uh, you're locked in. Oral Roberts plus three and a half. And Moneyline at plus 140 for Mikey Money. And we roll on. We roll on to the big sky. Three games left on Mikey Money's card before Dabby Cab. Off yet another winning night joins us right after. 9 p.m. Eastern, we have the Portland State Vikings. Portland State Vikings 16 11 7 and 7 in the big sky at Montana State Bobcats 11 and 15 6 and 7 in the big sky. We're at Worthington Arena in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, Portland State's won two straight. Uh, they snapped their losing streak. Uh, first, it was Northern Colorado. Uh, they beat them 82 uh, to 72. Uh, that was in overtime 82 72 at home over the Northern Colorado Bears. Uh, Portland State again playing in front of very few people. Uh, then they follow that up with a win, a nice easy win over Northern Arizona. And the Lumberjacks aren't that bad. Uh, we, we remember them from a couple years ago being horrific. Uh, now five and eight in conference. Portland State uh, seven and seven in conference. 
uh, here. So that was an impressive win for Portland. So back-to-back wins for Portland State. Uh, heading over to Montana State. Montana State's fallen off. These last four losses were huge. I mean, they, they were a player in the big sky uh, before that. You know, they were they were sitting 6-3 and three in conference. But they lost at home to Idaho. They lost at Northern Colorado. Uh, they lost at Northern Arizona. And then they lost at Montana. So that's three straight road games that they have lost here. Three straight road games they've lost and four in total. And they played Montana State, and they beat them. That was Saturday, January 27th. Portland State at home beat Montana 94-91. Both teams were fire uh, from outside. Portland State shot 56 from three, while Montana uh, while Montana State shot 55% from three. Let's get into the line history. Unfortunately, I got the money line up here, so let me just make a quick move over to point spreads. And let's take a look at what we are dealing with. Late uh, card action here from Mikey Money. We have right now Montana State at minus two and a half at minus 115. Uh, They opened up at minus three, went down to minus two. Now they're sitting at minus two and a half. So a half point move towards Portland State. And then from a total side of things here, we have a 149 Uh, this has been climbing quickly this opened up at 146 and it's only gone up we've not seen any buyback at any point yet sitting at 149 and then when we get to the cash flow let's get to these 9 p.m games and uh here we are from um we have 35 percent of the tickets and 82 percent of the cash now we're only talking about 509 tickets but big bets coming in on portland state a line had moved a point in the direction now a half point then 59 percent tickets 75 percent cash on the over uh take it away for us here mikey your third to last game on the card portland state vikings at montana state bobcats yeah this should be a fun opportunity here you know so we talked about the rematch spot previously here's a revenge situation here's a team that's we talked about the road teams being good in the rematch. They had previously won. Here's a team that's bad in the revenge spot, and that's Montana State. Uh, they fall into a 5-10 and 10 angle here with a spread of uh, three, and they're losing by three and a half. So it's a six and a half point cushion baked into this thing. They're losing those games by six points outright. So you look at kind of how these two teams are playing here. I just lost my my uh, my note on it here. Bear with me as I, as I scroll down to this game. There it is. Uh, and we have a situation where – Public loves this point spot here. They love this Montana State team, 65% of the bets. But the bigger cash coming in on Portland State because they know Montana State is suspect right now and on notice. And the best part about the way this uh, Portland State team plays is they recognize they have a deficiency in defense. They're definitely not a team that goes out there and uh, looks to control pace. In fact, it's the opposite. You look at – somebody mentioned it in the chat. The last time these two teams played, 94-91 – they know they're not a defensive team. You look at their last game against that Northern Arizona team. They shot 50%. They allowed 50% shooting, but they shot 50%, 36 rebounds. They protected the ball to just eight turnovers. They got 72 points or more in four of their last five games as well. They do not care about defense. They just want to go out there and out splash your ass here. And I like a team that's in that motivation spot. Yeah, they're going to have to catch a couple breaks to get it going their way. But Montana State's not a team that shows any concern out there. I get. Uh, they've won nine straight uh, Thursday night home games against the conference, but we're not asking them to, uh, to to win this game. We just need them to cover the spread. Bad revenge teams, as I mentioned, five and 10 angle. Also, here's another one of those situations. If you wonder why we look at these programs and these conferences, favorites in the Big Sky and the Southland Conference when they're on a total less than minus 10. Ergo, the books don't know exactly what number to put on it. They're just going to slap something in there that's single digits. 18 and 38 against the spread in those spots, the big sky and the Southland conference, the average line they're seeing is a minus five. Those teams are losing outright 72, 71 in those spots here. Give me the team that says, screw the defense. We're just going to go out gun you. I'll take Portland state with the plus five. Plus three. Let's go. Yeah. Plus three minus one ten. There's not very many threes <laughs> left. Just one with regular vig, uh, two and a half on the board. Very, very interested. Uh, to join you on the Portland State Vikings. Gift the Cartel says, coming off of road losses, going home, just when I'm feeling for Montana State, that look ahead for Montana State aren't uh, nobody. Uh, let, let's see what that oh, – I've got it all set up for the next game. Um, I, I hear you, Gift the Cartel. Montana uh, State's losses. got Sacramento on, on deck at home coming up next, and uh, you know Sacramento's bottom of the conference. So, yeah, there's not the look ahead is potentially what he's saying in that case there, but – 
Uh, you can't lose this game to Portland State because it'll throw things completely out of flux. You'll now be potentially behind, uh, you know, uh, even further than you already are. And uh, Montana State's the bottom, the top of the bottom third, if you will, in that conference. So, uh, yeah, they're going to probably get everything they got to Portland, but Portland State, you know, better team in a revenge spot. Let's roll on, head back to the whack here, 10 p.m. Eastern. We already heard Morgan Spooner make an interesting comment that needs to be uh, – you know, remembered, and that's that we talked about, you know, who was at the top of the whack, uh, that being Grand Canyon and Tarleton. And he says Seattle in third will be his pick to win the conference, that being the Seattle Red Hawks, Red Hawks Center in Seattle, Washington, their home. And they are at home to the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks, where 14, 11, and 7, and 7 in conference. DC Capper also with you on that Grand Canyon spot. So uh, let's roll here uh sf austin are losers of three of their last four uh they lost uh, to abilene christian 63 62 at home last out uh, the ut arlington in overtime before that that was on the road uh so they've lost three of their last four while seattle's playing well winners of their last two and they played and they beat seattle at home in overtime, uh, 89-84 in that one. It was a tightly contested affair. Uh, SF Austin won the Battle of the Boards handily, 47-34, and they were six-and-a-half-point favorites, so they didn't cover. Uh, that was uh, at a time you know, when SF Austin was 5-2 and two in conference and the Red Hawks were 3-4 and four in conference. That's changed. Uh, Red Hawks have really uh, stepped up. Uh, you know, They've really stepped up while the Lumberjacks have uh, faltered. So let's take a look at the line history here for this one. We have Seattle right now sitting at minus 6 and minus 115. Uh, they opened up at minus 6 and minus 110. Uh, this went to 5.5, 5.5. Five, five got up to 6.5 last night, so it's been all over the place. 6, 6.5, and, and then all the way down to 5 at 2 in the morning. Now there's been just a 5-cent move uh, towards the Red Hawks. And then from a... The total situation here, we are dealing with. Sorry, we are dealing with a 141, 141 at a pick'em, and this opened up at 139 and a half. So it's up a point and a half. We get to the cash flow as you could imagine, just 968 tickets in. We get no information on the total, but we know that 78% of the tickets and 98% of the cash is on the Red Hawks. Uh, Morgan Spooner says Chris Victor is coach of the year in the WAC for a reason. Um, last year, he's a really good young coach. You saw it if you watched the end of Grand Canyon Seattle game. Take it away for us here. DC Capper also on Seattle minus six. Your plan here, your second last spot on the board over in the WAC. I love the edge for Seattle in this game here. You know, I almost feel like the turning point for this uh, Seattle team was, you know, going out there and taking down that Grand Canyon team. Uh, big spot for them to get the job done. You know, handed them. Uh, you know, a big L in that situation. And uh, I think they're not going to look back from, from what they've got going on here. They won 86 79 on their home court. They were five and a half point dogs on January 20th. Now they did lose that revenge spot, but they still covered the spread. That was just a week and a half later. You know, Grand Canyon had to be salty after taking that L on the road out there to get that, uh, you know, it happened to be a bad spot for them, bad scheduling spot and everything else. But as far as scheduling is concerned, Ain't no look ahead here for the Seattle team. If you play the what if game, uh, we just talked about Tarleton losing uh, this game here to Grand Canyon, right? So you look at that thing right now, uh, that would move uh, that would move Tarleton to 11 and four in the conference. Seattle picks up this win. They go to 10 and six and they got the old league pin cushions on deck. The next game is Rita, uh, Utah, Rio Grande Valley sitting in the absolute bottom at two and 12 in the conference. Uh, this is a battle spot where, uh, this season is all but checked out for Seattle, and uh, they know that they can close in on second place. On the flip side of things, you know, Stephen F. Austin, they got themselves a little bit of a battle to close the season out and try to stay competitive here. Uh, Stephen F. Austin does average a couple of more points, 76.9 to 74.4. But again, I think the difference here is who have you beaten and what have you done for me? Uh, you know, we don't need to see who you are to know who you are, to quote our guy Travis Konechny in the outdoor hockey game out there. And uh, I think this is a situation where they're going to look to come back, avenge some opportunity here. We've got a spot in a 42-23-1 when you've got the favorite 
And you got a team off a spread loss versus a team with a winning percentage of 50% or greater in the league. They're 42 and 23, eight and two in their last 10. It's won the last two in those spots for us. Uh, I like Steven, uh, I'm sorry, I like Seattle minus five to come out here at home, command home court. They're going to put everything up because this is the make or break for them to get third and potentially second in the conference to lock things down. Uh, let's line shop for you here in this one. Uh, there are no longer nope. fives. Uh, in fact, the Pavadas moved to six and a half. And wow, Pinnacles moved to seven. Yeah, shit. Five and a halfs are gone now, too. That, how about that from earlier today? Uh, sixes are minus 110. Minus uh, we're 108. Six and a half. Yeah. All right, minus 108, even better. We'll take the minus six. Shouldn't be a problem. These boys should handle it. I think Stephen F. Austin's going to get cooked. It's going to be a long night for them, boys. You are locked in. Billy Friedrich saying that minus six, minus 115 uh, over at Bookmaker. And Gifted Cartel saying SF Austin hasn't covered a spread in their last 10 basketball games move on to the final spot on the board and we close up shop with mikey money in the big west we have the uc davis aggies 15 11 10 and 5 in conference at cal state northridge matador 17 and 10 8 and 7 in conference where premier america credit union arena in northridge california home of the matadors so we have uh here we have UC Davis on a three-game losing streak. Uh, they lose at Hawaii. They come back, uh, lose at home, 78-74 to Long Beach, and then UC Riverside by six, 67-61 on Saturday. Uh, CS Northridge had their winning streak snapped at home to Long Beach State. Uh, UC Davis ahead of Long Beach State by a half game in the conference standings. Uh, they're all looking up at UC Irvine, uh, followed by UC, then UC San Diego. So Northridge has their winning streak snapped at home, and now UC Davis comes to town. Uh, let's just take a look and um, see what happened in that first meeting. And they destroyed uh, Cal State Northridge. UC Davis beat them 95 to 75. And, you know, CSUN shot 30% from three. But, uh, I mean, UC Davis just shot the ball really well and took it to them from start to finish. I mean, we're talking completely dominated this basketball game. They were up 21-5. to five. You know, they were up 25-7. to seven. They just destroyed Cal State Northridge. Take a look at the line history then for this spot. We have Cal State Northridge plus one and minus 104. Uh, this, so they opened up as favorites, minus one. So we've had the flip. Uh, UC Davis has gone from plus one to minus one. Uh, that minus one got juiced up to minus 120 at one point. There are minus one and a half on the board. And then from a total scenario here, we have this sitting at 150. 150 at minus 112 to the under. Uh, this opened up at 147 and a half. So this got up to 150 and a half before there was a little bit of buyback. And then cash-wise, we have 68% of the tickets and 91% of the cash on UC Davis. And they've gone from dog to favorite. Uh, Jay Peasy says he's in Northridge right now. Yes, Michael X NBA will be coming in about 20 minutes or so, maybe about 20 minutes. Take it away for us here. Uh, Aggies, Matador is your final spot on the board. Yeah, the line tells you what you need to know in this game. Dog to favorite switch here uh, makes a lot of sense. You know, you can look at a lot of numbers. You can look at the recent match. You can look at any way you want to break this one down. It shows UC Davis. I see. Uh, Who's our guy in the chat there that said this is uh, Robert Martin? Call 1 800 Gambler if you take Davis. Well, you know what? Let me put this bet in before I give them boys a call because I am taking UC Davis. And, uh, you know, if you look at their situation, uh, uh, 179th offensive efficiency rating, CS Northridge 221. That's kind of the global metric of offensive basketball. And uh, look, we have a little intersection point here. We got the intersection of the Jimmy the Bag trend, back-to-back -back home losses as favorites, now in a situation going on the road, 119 and 64. And the other intersection point here is a road team in the rematch spot there, 12 and 8. So we're intersecting two spots that we love to play on here with this Northridge team. And uh, all for it, minus 1, minus 110. Northridge should, I'm sorry, Davis should uh, easily take care of this Northridge team. Uh, I think Northridge is going to get exposed and uh, going to be a tough night for them. So, yeah, Gift of Cartel says Northridge revenge. If only they weren't as bad on the revenge spot as uh, the positivity that D Davis has when they beat a team out there and show that they can go out there and do it again. So we're on Davis. 
minus one at minus 108. I'm just going to take a quick look at the money line and see if we can beat that number here for you. The final spot on the board for Mikey Money. Um, do you want the minus 117 money line or minus one at minus 108? I'll take the minus 117 money line. All right, you see, that point that works out for me. You see, Davis minus 117 for Mikey Money. Let's review all action here. We have from Mikey, he starts his card with the under 136 in North Carolina AT and Stony Brook. He's on Charleston Cougars over Delaware. He's on App State minus eight and a half, North Alabama Lions plus seven and a half, Grand Canyon minus four and a half. He's on these two road spots, Oral Roberts and Portland State Vikings. He got the Oral at plus three and a half, added the money line to it, and Portland plus three. I'm interested in joining him on both of those. The small road dog, uh, I wonder if, I mean, I'll see what else I add to the card, but I wonder if that would be best done if you're only going to make, if they're only those two bets, maybe just take them both on the money line. So if one cashes, you know, there's profit there. I'll have to, um, I'll have to figure that one out on my own. But I like those two spots a lot. He's on Seattle minus six. I'd like to get in and join him on the Red Hawk spot as well. Uh, that would be a little different uh, betting-wise. But uh, the line's moving quite quickly towards the Red Hawks. And then he's on UC Davis money line. Mikey, excellent work, my friend. Get that cash. Tell us a little bit about who's on last call this evening, 6 p.m. Eastern, right here on Pub Sports Radio. Hell yeah. We got Mickey the Mac on deck here. Our Thursday resident for last call has made his way uh, to the home of last call on Thursdays to break down the NBA and college basketball together. So excited to have the NBA back. We have to be reasonable about this thing. It's the first day back from the all-star break, but have ourselves a nice card lined up. I love the hockey card. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to give anything away here, but um, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that Bruins Calgary game goes. That one will have my eyeballs all over it tonight and uh, excited to break down everything that is the world of sports here. We almost have the equinox. We've got, uh, we've got golf in play. We've got uh, baseball, college baseball's in play. We've got the NBA and college hoops, the NHL. And I'm sure there's some other riffraff type of sports going on out there as well. So we'll talk about all those sports tonight. Looking forward to it. I'll see you guys over there. Jimmy, Jose, thank you boys for getting me on here and giving me the opportunity. And uh, I'll see you guys real soon. Good luck with your Get bets, everybody. Cash. Get that cash, Mikey. There he is, Mikey Money. We go from Rochester, New York to Dallas, Texas. I wish I had updated his record because it is a glorious uh, on a huge run here on our show, uh, making money. And he did the same thing on our live basketball bet stream Wednesday night, a uh, Dabby Cab uh, hosting alongside Dutch Boy Fresh. Uh, please welcome. Star of Medicaid Mondays and college basketball right here on Betting with the Bag Wednesday and Thursday. The magic man, Dabra Kadabra in the house. Dabby Cab, how are you, my man? Yeah, Jimmy. What up, chat? Man, doing good. I got to give a shout out to my uh, my co-hosts yesterday. Dutch, Razor came on. Uh, Billy gave out a plus 300. So, I mean, I appreciate the shout out for me cashing, but it wasn't just me, Jimmy. Uh, all about the hoops on Wednesday. We didn't lose a bet last night. You know, that's not going to happen very often. But there were five people on screen, and we didn't lose a bet. So it was a glorious fucking night. I love a that. Bet I love from that show. I lost a bet yesterday. I just meant a bet from All About the Hoops. I love it. I love it. Uh, every Wednesday night right here on Pub Sports Radio, right after Mikey Money's last call. Two spots on the board for you, Dabby Cab. But at this point, I believe you've only moved on one of them. We'll see if he moves on. And we'll start with that one that he has yet to move on uh, as far as I know. So let's get right into it. Two spots for Dabby Cab. He starts at 7 p.m. Eastern with the SMU Mustangs, 19 and 7, 10 and 3 in the American at Florida Atlantic Owls, 20 and 6, 10 and 3 in the American as well. We're in Boca Raton for this one. All looking up at USF, you know, South, South Florida, 20 and 5, 13 and 1 in the conference. Two games back is Charlotte. And two and a half games back is both of these teams, Florida Atlantic and SMU. Uh, SMU is rolling right now. Uh, they come flying and they're beating their opponents by margin. They were winners of six straight and that win over Temp uh, Memphis on Sunday was big. Uh, 106-79, uh, not their first foray into triple digits. They uh, also beat Tulsa 103-70 earlier in the season and there is no 
Rebenga to speak of. This is their lone opportunity to face Florida Atlantic and Florida Atlantic uh, coming off that loss to the aforementioned South Florida Bulls. They lose 90-86. It snaps their two-game losing streak. And, you know, they shot 33.3% from three and lost. And they were down 23 in the second half. I mean, they came back uh, from a huge deficit, 25 at one point. Uh, they came back, and they almost won this thing. Uh, came all the way back uh, to 87-86. So let's take a look at the line history here for the first spot of two on the board for Dabby Cab, uh, and let's get this up here. From a uh, spread perspective – oh, shit, I'm on the money line. My bad. Here we go. From a spread perspective here, we have Florida Atlantic at minus 6 at minus 110. Uh, this opened up at six, uh, went down to five and a half, got up to seven, back to five and a half, and now we're right back from where we started. So no movement there on the side. From a total look, we have uh, God, sorry, we have the total sitting at a very high, as you would imagine, one fifty three and a half. Uh, this opened up at one fifty two. We've gone up a point and a half, and then from a cash flow standpoint let me get to these 7 p.m games oh i just, I just blew past it here from a cash flow standpoint i don't know if i'm able to get it in time why don't we uh while i'm pulling up the cash flow as i know how important it is let me just give it one last quick a uh, roll through here uh, here we go 60 percent of the tickets 64 percent of the cash on smu uh, we've seen it go from both sides uh right now it's back where it started then 54 percent of the tickets and 74 percent of cash on the under which is a surprise as we've seen it climb take it away for us here dabby cab smu mustangs florida atlantic owls yeah first thing i'm gonna do is shout out our chat man because they're talking about this game pretty heavy joey said smu plus six is on his card bj thinks smu is a live dog nathan cerna said smu plus the points with the ponies I saw Robert Martin liked him. DC Capper on SMU plus the points. So here's the deal. I'm not going to talk about waffles, Jimmy, but I haven't bet this game even though I was going to. I'm not tracking that waffle stuff. You guys are more than welcome to if you want, but I'm not going to give oh. out something. Six there. and oh. I'm just saying I'm not going to track that because that, yeah. that, yeah. that becomes murky water. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like sure. I'm only tracking what I bet. I wanted FAU first half in a bounce back spot. I'll just go ahead and say that. I did want FAU first half in a bounce back spot. Damn, SMU is playing some good basketball right now. Um, they've won six consecutive games right now at this streak. Um, and they're still outside of the NCAA tournament conversation. So, you know, they need a few more wins. You know, right here is a is an opportunity where they're taking on a top 40 team in FAU right here where they can get that quad one win that SMU desperately needs. Um, and I'll talk a little bit here about FAU. You know, they haven't been as dominant, you know, this regular season as last year's team. They've been a little bit in cruise control, it feels like. Uh, lost last time out against UCF. Um, you know, they're no longer ranked after that loss. It, it, they, they just, like I said, they seem like they've been cruising. They're still projected right now as a number eight seed in the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, and they're ranked better than 35 by the net rankings here. Um, so this FAU team can still play. The offense is the reason why people still fear facing the Owls. Um, they're 17th nationwide on offense. Um, they're putting up 83.4 points per game. They do that on a 48.1% clip. Um, and, you know, from three, they're pretty good too, 36.7%. Uh, free throw line, I'd like to see it a little higher, 71.6%. But that's, you know, that's not the worst. It's just, you know, all good things come to an end. I know SMU is on a streak right now, but I, I just, I think for SMU, this is a bad spot for them to run into this FAU team. I think FAU actually plays with some intensity today, uh, which I haven't seen. Also, SMU, you know, their defense has been great, but they've allowed 79 points in each of their last two two games. Uh, that could be a precursor here against the FAU team that might be able to put up some points. Um, you know, both of these defense have had issues, so I understand why people would be looking at the over even with this large number. Um, but at home, FAU's defense is a lot better than it is on the road. At home, they're holding opponents to only 65.9 points. Uh, they hold them to 46 or 40.6 percent shooting, and they haven't allowed more than 70 points in three straight home games. So I think FAU's offense rocks here. Maybe I could look at an FAU team total over. Uh, all that being said, I respect these guys in the chat, and I don't have enough conviction to put my money on FAU. So I leaned FAU first half. I'm not betting it. 
All right. Well, for our own tracking purposes, the waffle play of the day now at 6 and 0 oh, is FAU minus 3 and minus 115. FAU first half minus 3 minus 115. And we will see if the magic of the waffle continues. We move on. 11 p.m. Eastern. Head over to the Pac-12. Oregon Ducks, 17 and 8, 9 and 5 in Pac-12 action. At the Stanford Cardinal, 12 and 13, 7 and 8 in Pac-12. Maples Pavilion. I've been there amongst the eucalyptus trees in Stanford, California. Let's take a look at the line history for this one. Or excuse me, the situation. Uh, Oregon coming off that great game at Oregon State on Saturday, winning 62-58. They did lose at home to Washington State, the now ranked Washington State Cougars. I should be wearing that shirt. Got that shirt hanging up. A bunch of college basketball shirts hanging up over there that I've not been uh, wearing. Uh, Washington State Cougars is a big one. Uh, they did beat Washington, the Huskies, 85-80 at home, but they're on the road after beating Oregon State 60-58. to Stanford's lost two straight. They also just lost at Washington State 72-59. They lost at Washington as well, but they're back home. When they were last at home, they destroyed USC 99-68, but that came on the heels of a loss to UCLA at home 82-74. Uh, the question is, can you trust their outside shooting? If you can trust their outside shooting, uh, then you're in business. Uh, that's the million dollar question here. This is their loan meeting with Stanford uh, this year. So we don't have a chance to talk about any type of a rebenga. Let's get into the line history here for this spot on the board for Dabby Cab. Again, this, oh shoot, I'm on first half. Sorry, let me just quickly move to full game, get to the bottom of the ledger. Here we go. Here we go. So, uh, right now we have it at a well some books have it at a pick'em Stanford minus one. This opened up at a pick'em. It immediately went towards Oregon. Oregon was minus one and a half. It's come all the way back uh, to Stanford being minus one. So we have a one point move towards Stanford right now over at Bet Online, which makes me curious to see what's happening over at Pinnacle. And it's the exact same number minus one at minus one oh. Nine from a total side of things, this opened up at 152 and a half, and it's now at 150 and a half. And then cash flow wise, here 53% of the tickets and 63% of the cash is on the Stanford Cardinal. And the line's now moved towards them. Take it away for us here, Dabby Cab. Pack Man, this is an interesting game for me. I think this is the most interesting game on the card today. Um, you know, a little bit of history between these two teams, and you know, take it for what it's worth. But out of the 35 games that Oregon has played at Stanford, they've only won five. So they are five and 30 um, at this arena, which is, I mean, that's, that's atrocious. And it doesn't make me feel good about the fact that I'm going to be on this ducks here. Um, you know, they barely, they barely beat Oregon state in their last game out, but I'll say this, they were up the entire game. They kept the lead the entire game. They covered the first half against the ducks or against uh, the beavers you know, and they won. They won against their rival. So even though it was a close game, that's a road win um, against a rival here, or that's a win against a rival, excuse me. So now they're going on the road to take on Stanford. Um, you know, I think Oregon's offense has been a little bit out of sync. They've only put up 116 points their last two games. Uh, but I think this is an opportunity for a team that was pushed outside of the bubble, right? That loss to Washington State put Oregon on the outside looking in. And, you um, Oregon's going to have to do a lot to get back. You know, they've got Arizona on deck coming up, but if they lose this game, I, I don't think it matters. I think they have to win this game if they want to have a chance to still go. Um, and like I said, their offense has been struggling, but they're going to get to attack a Cardinals defense here. Um, that's soft on the perimeter, 272nd in opponents, three point percentage um, inside. They allow 60% uh, opponent real uh, rim field goal percentage. Um so I think this is going to be a strong showing for the Ducks, especially their center, Dante. Um, you know, he put up 22 points for, versus Oregon State. He's probably their best player. Um, and I think he's going to have a day against Stanford Biggs. Oregon, uh, another thing that they do is they take care of the basketball while, while Stanford is very turnover prone. Stanford's given the ball away 13.3 point uh, times per game. Um, they don't create takeaways on defense. They're only averaging 5.2 steals per game. So I, I think that, you know, I think the Ducks, even though it's a tough road spot, you know, they've been tough on the road. I think this is a, 
a spot where they got to get it mentally together. Uh, they're going to have to go into this hostile territory and come away with the win uh, to stack this resume. And I'll say it a little bit more. So this game opened as a pick them, right? Stanford's at home. So maybe, maybe we're leaning a little bit towards the Ducks. Both of these offenses are very evenly matched, Jimmy. I'd, I'd, I'd maybe give the edge to Stanford just a little bit on the offensive side. Uh, but the two parts that are going to decide this game are rebounding and turnovers, right? Those are those are what I think matter the most here. And Stanford is just 255th uh, in offensive turnover rate, and they're 336th in offensive rebounding rate. So I think because of the fact that the Ducks need this win, and they should win on the boards, and they should win on the turnover rates, I'm going to take the Ducks here. I got the Ducks in the first half plus half a point. And in, in this spot... Why did you decide uh, first half over full game? A couple of reasons. One, you know, and this is a very simple one, but hey, at the end of 40 minutes, if the game's tied, I don't win my bet, right? It goes into overtime and we got to see what happens. At the end of 20 minutes, however, if this game's tied, I win my bet. So there's one little half a point that I, I think does have value. Uh, you guys would be surprised at how many times these first halves actually end tied when I have them bet. Another thing is, like I said, Stanford right now, they're 30 and five against Oregon at home. So for me, it just made more sense just to avoid the home crowd. Oregon first half plus a half at minus 108 for Dabby Cab, who is nine and two over his last 11 bets on the show. So Cab has moved Oregon first half. A plus a half, a minus 108. So if I told you that Stanford's becoming more and more appealing to me as I study the game, uh, you know, from a full game standpoint, of course, uh, you know, did you, you had clearly enough concern to only want to focus on the first half concern about the home team kind of getting on a roll late in this game? Yeah, this was never going to be a double up spot for me, if that's what you're asking. It was only ever going to be first half taking a half a point. Um, and Jimmy, people are probably seeing it more and more than ever, but I can cash first half and you can cash full game easily. We saw it, what, yesterday with Penn State, right? Um, mm -hmm. Illinois, I know I only had the money line, but they would have covered the points first half also. And then they lost outright to Penn State yesterday, right? Um, and I can go on and give a list of all these games that have done this, but College basketball is a game of two halves. So if you have conviction on the full game, I, I'd rock with it. I love it, Cab. Thank you for rolling with us. Oregon first half plus a half. The boys destroyed the live bet show last night. Uh, all about the hoops every Wednesday. And then, of course, alongside Connor Mack, we have our Saturday college basketball live bet stream before at Medicaid Mondays on Monday. Uh, Dabby Cab, please support Cab on X. He puts out all his action there and asks for nothing in return at Dabby Cab. Cab, any last words for the Cabbers Sport and Show? We're there, Jimmy. We got, what, two weeks now, three weeks? Uh, San Antonio is coming up, man, and I can't wait to see you guys down there. If you haven't gotten your ticket yet and you're thinking about it, stop thinking about it. Just do it. Get a ticket to San Antonio. We're going to be there for, you know, several days. It says March 22nd through the 24th. Uh, I'm actually going to get in on Wednesday, so we're going to be there for several days. We're going to be drinking, smoking, gambling, um, you know, in the studio, just living the life. So if you guys can get there, get there, because I want to kick it with y'all. Uh, it's going to be a blast. I can't wait. I'm more excited this year than I have been yet any year, Jimmy. Yeah, it's going to be magic, man. I'm, I'm pumped up, man. It's coming up soon. And we're going to be there for round one of the tourney. So it's going to be magic. Uh, I love it. A dabby cab on Oregon first half plus a half at minus one. Oh, eight. There we go. Dabby cab in the house. Let's move on to our final college basketball capper before Billy Brisbane joins us for NBA. Your next guest stars on nerd talk every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday on the picks from Dave YouTube channel, three games on his slate before we get into this monster NBA card. Please welcome from Arizona by way of California, Mr. Dave Rogers to the show. Dave, how are you, my friend? I'm great, Jimmy. Glad to see you back. Hope you're feeling healthy and ready to go. Back in action. I'm back in action and thankful to be. Let's get right to work, Dave. We start at 7 p.m. Eastern. The Central Connecticut Blue Devils in the NEC, 9-3 and three in the NEC, 15-10 and 10 overall, are playing at the Wagner Seahawks, 12-12, and 6-6 12, six and six in the NEC. We're in Staten Island for this one. Woo, woo, woo. 
Let's take a look at our line history and the situation here. Uh, the Wagner Seahawks uh, coming off a loss uh, at home to Sacred Heart, 63-53. Uh, Central Connecticut beat Sacred Heart three games ago, 77-70. Uh, we have a LeMoyne loss at LeMoyne in overtime for Central Connecticut. That was the last time we saw them. That snapped their two-game winning streak. And then, of course, the question is, uh, have Central Connecticut and Wagner seen each other? Uh, and the answer is yes. It was a very tightly contested basketball game on Saturday, January 27th. Central Connecticut won uh, in overtime by a point. Uh, it was extremely close all game long. Like It was a very, very tight game. Both teams shot similar. Both teams played good basketball. Wagner won the battle on the boards, but not the final score, losing 69 to 68 to the Blue Devils. Let's take a look at the line history here for Dave's first spot uh, on the board. We have Central Connecticut as two and a half point road favorites. Uh, they opened up at two. This got up to three and a half at one in the morning and it's come back. A half point move uh, towards them is all we've got. And then from a total scenario here, we're sitting at a very low 125. Uh, this opened up at 124. Move it up to 125. It is juiced to the over at 125. And then cash flow. 85% of the tickets and 96% of the cash. 85 and 96 on Wagner. And we've seen that half point move to Central Connecticut. Very interesting. We have no information on the total. Uh, Jarek White on Wagner Moneyline and plus the points. Take it away for us here, Dave. The floor is yours. Blue Devils at the Seahawks. Yeah, what, what an exciting matchup. Um the, he's looking at these two teams, their specific team stats. They're not great. What do you expect from the Northeast Conference? I mean, they don't get the talent that the Big Five do, but there's still opportunities to bet these schools. And I, I think, what does Mike say? We like to get down in the mud or down with the pigs or whatever, whatever, whatever he says. He said it earlier, but we're doing that. Okay. So, but things to note as far as uh, op opponents' points per game, basically scoring defense, both teams are pretty good. Central Connecticut, 68.8 points to their opponent per game. That's 79th. Again, there are 362 teams in Division One, so that is well above average. And Wagner is the in the top 10, 64.1 uh, points per game. Is that really that they're great defenses, or is that a product of them playing in a lesser conference? It, it could be one or the other. I actually think maybe the latter has a lot to do with it. Um but a significant difference is on offense. Central Connecticut has the better offense. They score 70 points per game. Wagner scores 61. I think that's going to be a determining factor. And then you look at the trends. Wagner's 4-3 and three against the spread at home. Only, uh, but 0-1 uh, uh, ATS as the home dog. It's only happened once, a small sample size. But 6-6 six and six as a dog in general and 6-6 six and six in the conference, they just are, are mediocre to bad as far as uh, covering spreads in situations like this and central Connecticut's good four and one ATS. Um, wait a minute. They're not home favorite as a way favorite. I don't know why I put home favorite. Sorry. Four and one ATS as a way favorite 10 and four ATS as the away team in general, eight and four ATS in conference and six and two ATS as a loss. Uh, you have a better offense. You have way too many trends for central Connecticut. Um, I know this is kind of a, it, it's a squarish play, a team that has a better record. Um, but uh, I'm on Central Connecticut, Lang, whatever. It's two and a half or three. Give me, give me the best number you can give me. Central Connecticut for Dave. I just want to go back to the um, cash flow. I was setting up the next game, but I'd rather go back to this. And I think Coin talked about it. 86% of the tickets and 96% of the cash. How, how many tickets are on it, though? On Wagner. Uh, sorry, let me. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't this. want to interrupt you, but. No, no, it's all good. It's just that uh, I had it set up and then I left it. We have uh, 585 tickets in. So, so this is kind of what I'm saying. And 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 I, Jim, Mike and I have gone back and forth this. And I know that uh, and I've talked to Jim about this. People follow market movement as far as tick tickets and handle. I'm not there yet for a couple different reasons. These types of games aren't the ones. I think it's even less significant in these games. There's not enough money bet on it. You know, if you did care, I mean, if you did look, not, I, I agree the sample size is small, but if you did, you would be very interested in Central Connecticut. Yeah. You know, no, 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 I know I understand. And, and, and I don't want, again, I don't want to get off on a tangent, though. I'm getting closer to it. As as more books unite under these action or whatever, and it's and it becomes more regulated, I'm going to get on it. It's just, 
I'm, I'm a hard headed, but e either way is what I'm saying is if I'm not looking at it in general, I'm definitely not looking at it in this game. I feel you. Uh, Dave moving on central Connecticut here, central uh, Connecticut minus two uh, and a half at minus one and central Connecticut two and a half minus one. And hmm. uh, it's a very, very interesting spot. I want to revisit it, but that was the 69-68 uh, overtime win for Central Connecticut at home. Now they head to Staten Island. It's very, uh, very interesting. The, the amount of cash on Wagner, uh, I guess people just just banking on the Rebenga, but I don't know if that happens here. Very interesting look. Dave is on the board. Next up for Dave, 8 p.m. Eastern, we head to the Hanner Fieldhouse, W.S. Hanner Fieldhouse in Statesboro, Georgia, home of the Georgia Southern Eagles, who've been in atrocity this year. Uh, Atlanta not pleased with the basketball being played uh, from Georgia Southern and Georgia State. 5-22 uh, and 22 is Georgia Southern, 5-9 in the Sun Belt. Uh, Texas State Bobcats 11-16, and 4-10 and 10 in conference. Uh, Texas State has lost two straight. They have not played each other this year. This is a lone meeting. They've lost two straight. Both came on the road. Now another road game for Texas State. They were winning games before them. Uh, they are a game back of Georgia Southern in the conference. Uh, Georgia Southern in the throes of a losing streak and not playing good ball. They've lost six in a row. They had won three or four before the six-game losing streak, but now they've lost six straight. Uh, they lost uh, to James Madison, and they played well, 87-80 last out. They played well uh, two games in a row on the road at Coastal Carolina and James Madison. Uh, they lost at home to Buffalo, obviously a uh, debacle there. But, you know, two of their last five games have gone to overtime, and only one of them was by more than seven points. You know, I mean, the, of those five of those last five games. So they've been playing close basketball. I'm wondering, you know, if they're live here. Let's take a look at the line history for this spot. God, sorry, so many things up here. Uh, again, this one pops off at 8 p.m. And we have uh, Georgia Southern right now as two and a half point favorites, minus two and a half. Uh, they opened up at a pick em. Now two and a half point favorites. They were even three and a half point favorites at 1030 last night. So uh, some legit love uh, for the Panthers from a total side of things here. Uh, we have uh, it's sitting at 138 and a half. It opened up at 136 and a half. We have two points of movement towards the over. We have no information on the total cash wise. Oh, shit. That was a, my bad. Sorry, uh, let's get over to this one. We have no information on the total cash-wise uh, or ticket-wise, but we know that 80% of the tickets are on Georgia Southern and 65% of the cash. Uh, Texas State is 20 and 35. Uh, do you trust Georgia Southern as a favorite on a six-game losing streak? Take it away for us here, Dave. Bobcats at the Eagles. Yeah, in very interesting how bad Georgia Southern's been and their losing streak, the way the line is moving. Again, that's not something... I really pay a bunch of attention to, except for when I'm betting it and where it is. Um, but very, very interesting. Definite edge on... Um, wait a minute, what am I looking at here? All right, sorry. I, I fucking befuddled. Uh, de definite edge on defense here as far as points scored per game. Texas State... Um, they score a, a set or given, sorry, to their opponents on defense, uh, opponent scoring. Texas State allows 70 per game, which is actually pretty decent, 120. So they're above average. And Georgia State's been horrible, almost 80 points a game to their opponent, 339. Very, very bad. That might seem bad to Georgia State when you have a bad defense, but if you're playing a team that can't score, it doesn't matter. It's kind of a wash, right? Texas State only scores 64.8 points per game. Um, as far as the number, they're 335 in the nation. They're just as bad on offense as Georgia State is on defense. So it doesn't really matter if your defense is bad, if the other team can't score. Uh, and Georgia State, uh, they score 71 points per game. So it's not, you know, not a big edge on offense to uh, Georgia State, but, but definitely a little one. Um, so bad defense in Georgia State and a bad offense that can't score in Texas State. So really all we're going to look at there is a slight edge to Georgia State in scoring and we're kind of we're kind of uh you know looking at it with a fine tooth comb but the real deal and this is what you're going to see in the three games that i have is we're following trends they're just good spots for the teams that we're taking um georgia state hasn't covered the spread 
uh, at home as a home favorite very well. Zero, one, and one. Again, that's only a two game sample size, but they are four, three, and one against the spread as a home team in general, and eight, five, and one in conference against the spread. But really, what we're looking at here is Texas State in this spot has not trended very well at all against the spread. Six, seven, and one against the spread as the away team, four, six, and one as the away uh, dog. And their last four away games, uh, they've all been dogs. So they've, they've haven't covered their last four away games, and they're five, eight, and one in conference and let's go back to the line moving there's a significant edge on, or, there, or there's an, a slight edge on offense for georgia state the edge for texas state on defense um doesn't much matter and um they're trending poorly so i'm on georgia state here um you know it's hard it's hard to get on a team with a, with a losing streak like they're on but uh the trends push it over the edge for me and you mean Georgia Southern? Uh, Georgia here. Southern. I said Georgia yeah. State. I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, you know, this all makes sense to me. I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you, and uh, I'm gonna roll with you. Uh, this is. Um, I think it's very telling what's happening here in the marketplace, and I like it. I, I have no. I don't feel like this. Uh, uh, yes, it's six game losing streak, but it does feel like a spot where they can step, but where they'll have hope against the bad Bobcat squad. That's just four and 10 in conference. Uh, I like it. I'm all over it. The five and 22 line doesn't really indicate that this is a better team in conference than Texas state. Uh, so I, I like it. I'm with you. Uh, let's line shop for you on this Georgia Southern spot here. Uh, we'll be rolling with you on it. We have, Two and a half at minus one oh five over at Bavada. Minus two and a half here, minus two and a half at minus one oh five. All right. Uh and let's bring Dave home for the final spot on the board. We head to Long Beach, California. Uh not only Dave uh spent many hours there, but we also uh DJ Big Boss now in Long Beach. Uh, as well as our friend Noli knows who'll be back around here shortly with the baseball season uh, coming back to us. Cal State, Bakersfield, Roadrunners, 10 and 16, 5 and 10 in the Big West at the Long Beach State Beach. Long Beach State Beach, 17 and 9, 9 and 5 in the Big West. We're at Walter Pyramid for this one. Uh, you know, Bakersfield's not been good. Not been good. Now, there's no harm in losing to UC Irvine 77 71 on Saturday at UC Irvine. UC Irvine, a 12 and 2 in conference and hoping to get the bid for the Big West here. But Long Beach State has won four straight games and they're playing big, good basketball. The last two came on the road uh, and they beat UC Davis at UC Davis 78 74. UC Davis, of course, a half game above. We just talked about them above Long Beach State, who are currently in fourth in conference. And then they smashed uh, CSUN. Um, you know, we know CSUN's a bad basketball team, but they beat them comfortably in at CSUN 87 73. Long Beach State Beach playing good basketball. Here we go. Let's set up the line history and hear what Dave's plan is for this one. These two teams did face each other. Uh, they did face each other. Uh, Cal State Bakersfield won 82 76 uh, at home in overtime in that one. And the beach shot 25% from three, while Cal State Bakersfield shot 55% from three. I'm curious to see what this line is because I can understand um, expecting. A Rabenga here, if that is in case, uh, is in fact what you're expecting. Now they're a huge favorite. We're sitting here as ten and a half point favorites. That's uh, that's pretty pricey. Uh, they opened up at eleven, it went down to ten, back to ten and a half. This is a pretty pricey proposition. Then here we go from a, a total side of things. Here uh, we are dealing with a one forty five and a half at a pick'em. Uh, this opened up uh, at one forty. Five, got it to 145 and a half. Uh, it's not much movement there. And then cash wise to set this up properly here for Dave. Get it going. Sorry. Here we go. Uh, we have, where is this? 55% uh, of the tickets and 42% of cash on Long Beach. No information on the total. Take it away for us here. Final spot on the board for you in the uh, here in the Big West, Dave, Long Beach State at home. Yep, back back on a Long Beach State game. Uh, this is another game. These three games, uh, they're very, very similar in the spots. Uh, you have one team that's distinctly better on offense in Long Beach State and the other that has an edge on defense in Bakersfield. Long Beach State's definitely the more talented team, uh, evidenced by their record, obviously, 17-9 and nine straight up, 9-5 and five in conference. 
out of conference, they did beat Michigan and Michigan and USC at USC. So they're not a bad team. They just don't play defense really well. That's really their problem. And, and Cal State, uh, Bakersfield, 10 and 16 straight up, 5 and 10 in conference, just not that great. Um, but are we going to trust Long Beach with, with, with du- being a double digit favorite? I'm not. Cal, let's, but let's get into a couple of things first. Uh, Cal State, Long Beach, they, they cover on the road. Um, they cover as the away dog. Uh, they're seven five ATS in both categories. They're also three and one ATS at double as double digit dogs. So they are covering double digit spreads. And Long Beach State's zero and two as a double digit favorite. Three and four ATS at home. Two and three ATS as home favorite. Seven and seven in conference. This is actually one of the weaker seasons for Long Beach State in conference. Who usually, as as ev- seen by who they play, they play Michigan. They schedule USC. They play a tough out of conference schedule, and then they get in conference, and they usually beat up on it. And it's them or Santa Barbara uh, every year that's kind of contending uh, for for the top spot in the Big West. But I'm not trusting Long Beach State here with do- as double digits. I think I got, I did get an 11 last night. It's gone down half a point, um, which uh, I think is interesting with with the the the, the ticket and handle uh, stats that you gave. But anyways, I'm on the road runners. I'm I'm taking the points and. Um, you know, that's it. Let's lock it in for you here. It, it was a little bit bigger spread than I was anticipating. I uh, even my guy PZ saying the same thing, you know. Yeah. So uh let's lock you in. We get you a plus ten and a half at minus one oh five. Plus ten and a half for Cal State. Here we go, Cal State plus ten and a half at minus one oh five. For Dave Rogers. That uh, includes Georgia Southern minus two and a half at minus 105 and Central Connecticut minus two and a half at minus 110. Uh, Nate Cerna agreeing with the Road Runners look. Same with Robert Martin. Uh, good luck with your action, Dave. Thank you for sharing it with us as well. Tell us a little bit about what's going on on the Picks from Dave YouTube channel. Yep. Picks from Dave on YouTube. We run a live show. Starts at 6.45 Eastern every single night, or not every single night, Wednesday through Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, end of the week, looking into the weekend. Um, you'll see a, a bunch of common faces that are on the panel here, uh, also in the chat. Um, and then I'll be here on Thursday with Jimmy breaking down college basketball. Jimmy, thanks so much. Ramon backstage, thank you. Thank you to the chat. Best of luck, and uh, we'll see you next week. Love it, Dave. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. It is time to move into NBA. So we have 25 games that we have capped. We have 12 left in NBA calling our name in a tricky NBA card. Coming back from the All-Star break, but we have just the man to deliver the goods. Please welcome our NBA expert today on Thursday, February 22nd. Coming to us from South Jersey, our guy Billy Brisbane in the house. Brizzy, how are you, my man? What's good? Doing good, man. Doing good. Been on a nice little streak, so hopefully you can keep it rolling for this one. Yes, uh, a high importance. So uh, I did things a little differently uh, here for these breakdowns. We don't care who the team just played, unless it's for individual stats, uh, but who cares? There's been a long break. Who cares? Uh, I did, by the way, tail Dan Kelly just for 200 bucks on the Bucks to win the Central at plus 275, uh, you know, just a, a $200 play there. So I did tail that. And as you guys know, I did put a thousand on the heat at plus 100 with my magic uh, 200 at plus a thousand simple things. Um, but just to guarantee me profit um, at the end of the regular season. So those have been additions to my future card. So let's, Roll. Very, very, very interesting slate here. Thank you guys for joining us. Brizzy, thank you for making time for us. We've had a couple uh, notes from the chat. Ralph Nunziata, our guy Ralph, uh, he says the Warriors will beat the Lakers tonight. We'll cover and beat the Lakers. Of course, LeBron not in the lineup for the Lakers. And then Ron Crawford's spreadsheet play of the day is the Washington Wizards. And Tori Coker. His play of the day gets us started. He is on the Magic plus seven. Uh, Justin McKelvey moved on the Bucks plus 300 for the Central right now. Dan Kelly saying 275 is a great number. Uh, it's a much better number for Dan, who gave out the Cavs to win the Central at plus 750, something like that. Uh, and I didn't move on that. And now they're, you know, heavy favorites. So great, great job, Dan. And uh, just know that I am listening, my friend. So let's get 
to work here. 7 p.m. Eastern, we get started. Tori Coker giving us the Magic plus 7 in his play of the day. Orlando Magic 30 and 25, 12 and 17 on the road to the Cleveland Cavaliers, 36 and 17, 19 and 9 at home. We're at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. Another thing was for the pace and everything, I, I went to 10 games instead of 5 games. I didn't want too much caught up in if the last five games were on the road or, you know, there, there were some interesting uh, streaks happening there at the, so this is a 10 game look here. Orlando seven and three over the past 10 playing at the 27th fastest pace in the league, 96.3 possessions a game. Cleveland, the hottest team in the NBA coming into the break nine and one uh, playing at the 23rd fastest pace, 97.80 uh, possessions a game. A razor sharp picks just posted his gambler's first glance video for NBA that is up. So let's, Get this a rolling for us here, and let me move over to NBA. I'll have everything set up a little better here in a second, but uh, let's roll into the line history for this one. Both teams playing good ball coming into the break. Right now, we have Cleveland as legit big favorites here. Minus eight. They're eight and a half on the board. This is an eight spot. This opened up at seven at a pick em. Moved to seven and a half at 1045 this morning, moved to eight at 1107 this morning, and it is juiced to Cleveland even at this eight. So line moving uh, towards the Cavaliers. Let's get into the total for this spot here. Oh, God, there we go. From a total side of things, we have it sitting at a two. 16 and a half 216 and a half uh this opened up at 215 so we've gone up a point and a half and then when we get to the cash flow for this one we have 60 percent of the tickets on orlando but just 45 percent of the cash so uh, the Cavs have 40 percent of tickets 55 percent of the cash and the lines moving towards them total wise 28 percent of tickets and 59 percent of cash on the under and it's climbed one and a half points. Troy Torrance is home favorites between minus seven and a half and minus nine and a half market move their way and total two twenty uh under two twenty five seven and three against the spread winning by fourteen points on average. Says and if the total moves to the over four and one against the spread. Ian Shaber says I could hear your NBA data whispering to Troy Torrance. By the way, uh Troy Torrance will be capping NBA with us uh on Friday, March first. Friday, March 1st. So in eight days, he'll be capping NBA with us. Dan Kelly says, going back a few years, first game after the All-Star break, both teams in top half of the league. Home favorites win outright, but don't cover an extraordinary amount of the time. Cleveland on the first of a back-to-back. -back. They play at Philadelphia tomorrow. Cleveland went into the break. Uh, winners, of, as I said, nine, nine of their last 10, 18 of their last 20. Uh, and they did it handling the injuries to Darius Garland, who missed 19 games. He came back on January 29th and Evan Mobley, who missed 22 games. He came back January 26th, uh, you know, very um, impressive that they were able to do all of that on the other side. And Mobley has uh, played nine of the 10 games since coming back 15.3, uh, 9.5 boards uh, per game. And then Bancaro is what you talk about. Uh, even Franz Wagner has been very good this year. A uh, Bancaro though, averaging 23, 6.9 boards, 5.3 assists. And they're five victories away from their highest win total since 2018-19. That was the last time they made the playoffs. Take it away for us here, Brizzy. First game on the board, Magic Cavaliers. Yeah, at first glance, I was leaning towards the Magic. I mean, they've been kind of rolling heading into the All-Star break. Uh, they won seven out of their last ten. But the Paolo Pincaro news is just too much for me here. Uh, late question i will basically didn't show up at shoot around so late day questionable downgrade um i don't think he's gonna play here tonight and just off of that alone i'm not trying to bet orlando without uh apollo in the lineup first game back from the r-star break too as well for him he might just get a day of rest here um I think there could be some value in the props here in this game. Uh, Moritz Wagner over six and a half points. He scored seven out of his. Uh, he scored seven points in eight out of his last ten games when playing fourteen plus minutes. He's gone over his line in the first two meetings versus Cleveland, scoring eleven and fifteen points in those games. Uh, missed a number on the last game though. He's played between eighteen and twenty-one minutes in the three meetings versus Cleveland. And he's been one of the more consistent prop overs in the NBA, uh, hitting at a 77% clip this season. So if uh, Apollo's out, I would probably lean towards the props here. Uh, Franz Wagner, over three and a half assists, is there for the taking. But long story short, in this game, you can't bet this game uh, on the Magic side if you don't have the Apollo news. And then if you're betting the Cleveland side, I mean, you might get a, 
a number or two, a point or two of closing line value. But uh, this isn't a game that really stood out to me on the slate today. We roll on. Then next up for us, 7 p.m. Eastern, we have the Detroit Pistons, 8 and 46, 4 and 23 on the road at the Indiana Pacers, 31 and 25, 17 11 at home at Cambridge Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana. Detroit, 3 and 7 going to the break, playing better ball. Uh, these teams playing at a similar pace. Uh, the Pacers have slowed down. Uh, they're now 10th in the league, 100.65 possessions game over those 10 games. And Detroit just barely ahead of them, 100.75 uh, possessions a game. Let's get into the line history here for this one. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Here we go. Uh, you know what? We'll start with the total. I've got the total up. Uh, this total, uh, the opposite, 30 points higher than what we just talked about. Uh, wild. Uh, this total opened up at 247 and a half. It's dropped down to 246, a point and a half move towards the under. Uh, it's amazing that this could be this high of a total with teams, you know, barely playing over 100 possessions a game. But that is the NBA that we now reside in. Indiana sitting at minus 12. They open up at minus 11, went to 11 and a half. Then went to 12. Uh, cash flow wise here, we have 60% of the tickets and 56% of the cash is on the under. And on the spread, we have 66% of the tickets and 63% of the cash on the Pistons, but the line certainly not moving towards them. Uh, by the way, Dan Kelly saying Jared Allen has a double double in 21 of his last 24 games, so it's only minus 180 on. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be fair. Oh, for a double double. Sorry, I was thought, I thought that was saying the book. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to see what was DD. Is that, <laughs> yeah, is that FanDuel or DraftKings? What the hell is that, DD? Um, but double double, my bad. Uh, a big show says over a half Lucas uh, Raymond points and over a half more at Cider points in the same game parlay plus 288 for the Red Wings. So let's roll into this one here. Uh, Pacers come on in off hosting the All Star game. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton was very busy and uh, busy man. And they're not going to have Naismith. <laughs> Excuse me, Aaron Naismith out with the right ankle injury. And he's been playing very well right now, shooting 45.2% from three. Uh, Cade Cunningham on the other side, you know, playing through the left knee soreness. He's going to be a game time decision, I guess, or not, a, you know, a pseudo game time decision in, in every game. And Quentin Grimes, uh, he's been out with the right knee sprain. He's listed as qu uh, doubtful. Uh, here tonight. Isaiah Stewart also listed as questionable after missing uh, last eight games due to a left ankle sprain. So, you know, who will we have in the lineup for the Pistons? They've got game time decisions on Stewart, Cunningham, and Grimes. Uh, take it away for us here. Brizzy, game two on the board, Pistons Pacers. Yeah, I like the way the Pistons have been playing basketball. Uh, they've actually been the most profitable team I bet on throughout the month of February. Uh, their lines are always double digits, so you can get really good live betting opportunities with such inflated lines. Um, particularly, I kind of don't like this spot for them tonight. Uh, the fact that the Pacers hosted our star weekend, I mean, I know they definitely partied throughout their vacation, but I mean, it's easier to go back to work when the party was at your house. Uh, that's always been the case in the scenario. I would just circle this game as a live betting scenario where if you're getting, uh, if the Pacers come out hot in the first quarter heading into like halftime and you can get like plus 17 through 21 on the Pistons, I would just take it live blindly. Don't even watch the game. One of those, watch the second quarter, bet the Pistons when the number gets really high, and then you just turn the game off and you watch the Pistons uh, cash in your bank account. That's what it's been like for the month of February for me for the Pistons. Uh, they've been covering spreads left and right. I would kind of lean towards the Pistons pre-flop, but um, – you could just I, just looking at this line right now. You could just get it. I just know you could get a better live line throughout this game and uh, just pre flop. I wouldn't bet this game. One eight hundred gambler. Let's roll on then. Next up for us, uh, seven p.m. Eastern with the New York Knicks, thirty three and twenty two, fourteen and fourteen on the road at the Philadelphia seventy six ers, thirty two and twenty two, seventeen and eleven at home. We're at Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Knicks did not look very good coming to the break, and either did the Sixers and its injury issues. To explain uh, are the reason to explain it. Uh, there's our guy Cuban Connect in the house. Jazz full game over 229. Rockets plus seven and a half. And Celtics team total over 116 and a half. Robert Franklin, by the way, moving on the Pistons plus 11 and a half on Polo as well. But here we go. Uh, two teams dealing with a ton of injuries going to the break, and we'll go over the situation for them. Uh, we have Philadelphia right now minus one at minus 108. Uh, they opened up at minus one at minus 105. So three cents of movement towards them from a total scenario here we are dealing uh, let me go over the pinnacle sorry we are dealing with a 228 and a half uh, this opened up at 226 and initially went down before it started climbing uh, Bonpolo looking at Nick's money line as well 
Then let's get into the cash flow for this Nick Sixers spot. Sixers have 34% of the tickets and 48% of the cash here. 48% of the tickets and 89% cash is on the under. 48 and 89 on the under. And yet that first move went to the under. And then as we talked about, it climbed quickly. So both teams needed the all-star break badly, especially the Knicks. They'd lost four straight going into the break. Uh, Julius Randle, shoulder, OG and Anobi, elbow, Mitchell Robinson, angle, ankle, Isaiah Hartenstein, Achilles, Dante DiVincenzo, hamstring, Boyan Bogdanovich, calf muscle. Of those uh, basketball players, Hartenstein, DiVincenzo, and Bogdanovich are cleared to go. They've been practicing. They will be in the lineup. Uh, Randle uh, and Anobi, and of course, Robinson will not be in the lineup. And Brunson, did he get any time to rest? Uh, you know, he, of course, was in the All-Star game. He's been spectacular this year. 41.1% from three, averaging 27.6 points per game. Then for the Sixers, they're, you know, of course, battling injuries as well. Embiid uh, out until late March. Uh, Melton with the back injury. Covington with a knee injury. Batum with a hamstring. And Tobias Harris with the hip. Harris and Batum are close to returning and Harris is not on the injury report. So Ed, Tobias Harris will be in the lineup, but to him listed as questionable. So Maxi Harris, Buddy Heald, campaign, Ricky Council, Terquavion Smith. I mean, that's, that's the squad that's coming. And then Kyle Lowry uh, working on his conditioning. Will he be uh, you know, playing at all here? Uh, so especially down the stretch, how much will he be playing uh, right now? Uh, he, Lowry is not on the report. So expected to get some time tonight. And then, uh, of course, Embiid, Melton, Covington out, and Batum game time like we talked about. Take it away for us here. A lot of injury moves, a lot of changes. Knicks, Sixers, Brizzy, what's your plan? Yeah, at first glance, the number looks appealing for the Knicks. They all they entered their all-star break on a four-game losing streak. But like you said, that was due to more of injuries and fatigue. They won the first meeting in Philadelphia at the end of January by 36 points. I think that was an ESPN game on a Friday night. Uh, the Sixers had their own share of injury problems themselves. They've dropped nine out of their last 12 without Embiid. Historically, though, there's been a bad spot for the next three and 11 straight up last 14 trips to Philadelphia. Uh, I think this game is a toss-up, hence to pick them line. But I would actually lean towards the under being the best bet in this game, either first half or full game. Usually when two teams play with inside a conference, uh, especially in the Eastern Conference, that game usually goes under. I'm interested in backing the Sixers here at home. Um, Troy Torrance thinking Knicks in this spot and, you know, uh, Von Polo on Nick's money line. If I gave you a free five hundred dollar bet right now on a side uh, here, who would you be? I would, bet the, I would bet the under. I think the 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 first time that these two teams played, and B was out there for this one. Uh, the total was at two thirty three and a half. People were betting over, and the game was one twenty eight to ninety two. The, the game drastically went under first half, and then it went under full game. But if you gave me a free five hundred dollars and gun in my head, I had to pick a side. I'd probably say the Sixers, but um, seems like a trappy line. I think the under is the best bet, though. Either first half or full game. Uh, there's a lot of trends that say this game at two twenty six and a half is too high. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, OG Stimmy OG on the Sixers. Uh, Dan Kelly says he agrees with you. The free bet is the under. Razor sharp picks leaning to the Sixers here, but passing. At this point, I think I move uh, on the Philadelphia 76ers. I expect to move on the Sixers. That would be my first spot on the board. We'll see how the card kind of comes together here. Let's move on. Uh, big game here because it's Kevin Ollie's uh, debut as the interim head coach for the Brooklyn Nets. Nets 21 and 33, 8 and 16 on the road at Toronto Raptors, 19 36, 11 and 16 at home, Scotiabank Arena in Toronto, Ontario. I mean, if you're reading the comments by Ollie and, you know, by the squad, they're going to be playing hard. Uh, I took a couple of his comments here. He, you know, all he said, we're, we are all auditioning. We are all audi auditioning these 28 games, players included. We've got to be in the same boat, rowing in the same direction to get it done. Uh, we've got to be attacking all of this here. Uh, and Troy Torrance says this is clearly an underplay. Uh, him speaking about the Knicks Sixers spot, clearly an underplay here. Uh, Dan Kelly says Jacques Vaughn is a good coach. Coaching was not 
the Nets problem. Von Polo on the Nets plus two. Justin McKelvey on the Nets uh, plus 120. Let's set up the line history here for this one. We have the Raptors right now at minus one and a half at minus 103. They opened up at minus two. Uh, they're now minus one and a half. Half point move towards uh, Brooklyn. When we get to the total here in this one, we're dealing with a 231. Uh, this opened up at 231 and a half, uh, now 231. So we have a half point move there. Then let's get into the cash flow for this Nets Raptor spot. Uh, Raptors have 38% of the tickets and 67% of the cash. So bigger bets coming in on the Raptors. Now that's the spread. Why don't we go to the money line? Uh, money line is really no different. 40% of the tickets and 53% cash on the Raptors. So the Nets had lost five of six games. Uh, they lost by 50 in their last game before the All-Star break. It was just horrific. And then what positives do you have to say about the Raptors? Uh, I mean, Scotty Barnes is an All-Star. That's about it. Uh, there's nothing else to say positive. They, they don't seem to be uh, playing with any unity right now. Uh, they look good against Indiana, but there was something on the line playing against Spicy. So uh, I, why would we not back the Nets here? Uh, take it away for us here, Brizzy. We have Nets Raptors. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I mean, the biggest news in this one is Jack Vaughn switching to uh, Kevin Ollie, and deservedly so. I mean, the Nets lost by 40, what, five straight up uh, over their last six, eight and 16 straight up on the road, which is pretty crazy because they're like the best ATS team in the first month of the season uh, for the NBA. But the Raptors have played their best basketball in their home court this season. I think uh, the Raptors internally, they're trying to decide if it's uh, time to take a chance at the lottery or take a chance in their playing tournament time and get a first round exit after. Uh, I have Troy's giving me a lot of stuff in the chat about the under, but um, I actually leans towards the over in this game. Uh, the Raptors have ranked, I mean, not the Raptors, the Nets have ranked dead last in defensive ratings since January 1st. And uh, while both teams have kind of trended towards the under, um, with Kevin Ali in there, based off of his just historical trends, I think they're going to change the pace of play. I think that's going to be the first thing that you're going to see with the Nets. They've been running extremely slow offense. Um, with Kevin Ali in there and his history between college and NBA, uh, they might push the pace a little bit more than what we're projected to see. But no conviction here on this game. If you gave me a free bet, I'd probably bet the Brooklyn Nets here. But um, this is just a game where – it, it's two teams trending in the wrong direction. The Nets are obviously trying to take a chance at the lottery. For them to get a better lottery number, the Raptors would have to win this game. Uh, the Raptors, mathematically, they're not out of the play-in tournament. Like, if they go on, like, a five- or six-game winning streak, they're right there. I mean, I don't know if you saw the news, but the Hawks – uh, no Echeke Ekongu for the foreseeable future. And I think Clint Capella should be back by the weekend. Whatever it is, the Hawks just look like they're in disarray. Like everybody in that play in tournament range is in high disarray right now. So um, this is like a, I don't know who's really tanking type of game. Uh, are the Raptors trying to tank or are they trying to win? If they're trying to win, they could definitely win this game. But if they're trying to tank, it would make mathematical sense for the Nets to get it. It's a weird game. It's not a game that I'm looking to bet, though. I want to back the Nets here. Um, you know, I want to quite badly. Uh, who's got the advantage with Claxton and Pirtle? Uh, Claxton by a huge, but I think Kelly Olenek off the bench for the Raptors has really gave them a different lens. Uh, he's been playing really good basketball since he's been in his home country. And uh, he's been a big – he's probably been the best player off the bench. Huh, I'm interested. I, you know, the Nets not playing any defense. We know that's the case, but we know that won't be the case in their first game with Ollie there. I, I, I do feel the Nets in the under, but at this point, I don't think I would even need to take the under. I could just take the Raptors team total under. Uh, with them being the favorite, which would give me an extra couple points. Um, you know, that I think that I'm trying to stay away from totals, but that would 
the Nets, then the Raptors team total under. All right, let's roll uh, on. Let's roll on. Uh, next up for uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, we have the Phoenix Suns, 33-22, and 15-11 on the road at the Dallas Mavericks, 32-23, and 17-13 at home at American Island Center, Dallas, Texas. Both teams 7-3 and three over their past 10, uh, playing at a pretty brisk pace uh, over those 10 games. Suns third fastest in the NBA, 102.75 possessions a game, while Dallas is eighth uh, in the league, 101 possessions a game. And both teams are playing good basketball. Uh, let's get into the line history here for this one. We have Dallas sitting minus one and a half. They open up minus two and a half. So we have a one point move uh, towards the Phoenix Suns. From a total side of things, uh, we have this sitting at 245. Uh, this opened up at 243 and a half. So we've gone up a point and a half. And when we get to the cash flow. For this one, we have 59% of tickets, 59% of cash on Dallas, but line moving uh, towards Phoenix. Then we have 41% of tickets and 62% of cash on the over. Razor Sharp Picks Gambler's first glance is the Suns plus one and a half. Plus one and a half. So Suns are on the first of a back to back. Uh, they play at Houston tomorrow night. Uh, you know, they've won five of their last six. Uh, Frank Vogel seems to have a handle on things now with some consistency with his lineups and then you have dallas that's won six in a row and daniel gafford and pj washington made them so much better in their front court so gafford's gone for 15 and 12 in three games since he's been there oh well uh, pj's gone for 8.7 and 5.3 take it away for us here brizzy suns mavericks yeah, uh, quick Suns note on their scheduling. Uh, in that second half, they're back to back against the Rockets. They play the Rockets three times over the, like the next week and a half. Uh, note for tomorrow, but uh, Phoenix have won their last two trips in Dallas. But I think that train kind of gets bucked tonight. Dallas is one of the hottest teams in, in the West heading into the All Star break, winning six games in a row. All but one of those wins were by double digits. They have the third highest net rating of 17.3 during that win streak. Uh, they've been playing really good basketball. Five and one ATS uh, last six, four and one straight up last five at home. Uh, the Mavericks, I, the, more of the cap on this one is the Mavericks epically collapsed in the second half of that game that they played last time versus the Suns. They're up by like at least like, I want to say close to 20 points. And then the Suns ended up coming back in the second half and winning that game outright. Um, I kind of like the spot here for Dallas. It's definitely going to be one of the more entertaining games to watch on this slate. But instead of getting enamored by the side, I think somebody said it in the chat that they're big on the under. And, man, the under definitely stands out to me in this one. Uh, the, it's going to be a common theme throughout the slate uh, with this being the first game back from the All-Star break. Uh, the under could definitely be really intriguing here in this one. Both teams coming back from the All-Star break could definitely be some rust. Both teams have trended towards the under. Uh, the Suns are 5-11 and 11 towards the over-under in their last 16 games, 11-15 and 15 on the road this season. Dallas has gone under six out of the last eight games. Head-to-head-wise, the under has hit three out of the last 11. Uh, I mean, not three out of the last 11, three and eight towards the over-under in the last 11. And both of these teams rank top 10 in defensive efficiency ranks. So um, this could be one of those ones where you're watching it live and you may be able to scoop up a uh, live under if it gets up to 250, or you can even bet it pre-flop. But um, I think the under would be the move on this one. Hmm. Dan Kelly saying, here is the way I'm going to play this game, considering his historical database says in the game, if he can get either team at plus six and plus points in the first three quarters, he will take that and look to get a good middle after that. But the gambler's first glance is in. Gambler's first glance from Razor Sharp Picks and is the Phoenix Suns plus one and a half. We move on. Next up, for, I'm, I'm interested in the Suns. I'm interested in the Suns. I'm going to sit with that a little longer, but I'm I'm certainly interested in them. Let's move on. 8 p.m. Eastern. We heard from Cuban Connect. He's on the Celtics team total over 116 and a half and uh, smoking three on the Celtics first half. They're at the Bulls. Bulls plus 320 for me to make the playoffs. I went over that look uh, that Dan talked about. Uh, you know, and playoffs I went over it. Tournament. 
uh, it's they're plus three twenty to make the playoffs. So you, well, you know, if playoffs the top six seeds, that's a lot different than them betting them to make the playing tournament. It's it's not because uh, you could. I mean, it's no. I mean, it's the same deal. I mean, you would just have opportunities to to middle or hedge uh, once they get into the playing tournament. So you know. Uh, you'd have to succeed in the playing tournament to get to the playoffs, obviously. And that's, you know, top eight, make the playoffs, of course, you know, to come in from the play, playing tournament. But they're plus 320. I'm just saying I took a look at it. It was something that Dan talked about. I took a look at it. Uh, and I did think that I wonder what the line would be if they lose to the Celtics right away. Not that it would change that much, but I'm curious to see what that would be. And, uh, of course, yeah, it's after the, you know, it's to make the playoffs. So it's, it's okay, cool. but let's, let's roll on. Uh, 8 p.m., Eastern here, Celtics 43 and 12, 17 and 9 on the road at Chicago Bulls, 26 and 29, 15 and 12 at home. Right? United States in Chicago, Illinois. Boston 8 and 2 in their 10, rolling into the break, playing 15th fastest pace, 99.25 possessions a game. Chicago 5 and 5, 97.32 possessions a game. And the only, I mean, for the Celtics, KP has brought a lot to the team. You know, 20.2 points per game. Uh, it's been a big addition to Tatum and Brown. And then for the Bulls, there's only one person to talk about. And that's Kobe White. I mean, he's been so good. Uh, in February, 24.2 points per game, shot 44.7% from three, 44.7 from three. Uh, he's a good guard. Uh, we're sitting here right now with the Bulls plus eight and a half. They opened up plus seven and a half. So we have a one point move uh, towards the Celtics. And then from a total side of things here, we are dealing with a 224, opened up at 226. So we've dropped two points there. And then when we get to the cash here, we have, uh, sorry, here we go. We have, oh, I thought I had it right. Sorry, just a sec. We have 73% of the tickets and 59% of cash on the Celtics. So Bulls are 27 and 41, 54% uh, of tickets, 67% of cash on the under. Take it away for us here, Brizzy. Any interest in Bulls Celtics? God bless the Celtics, man. They've been playing great basketball. I mean, 43 and 12. I mean, they're on pace damn near to have one of the best records ever in NBA regular season history. With that being said, though, I ain't trying to bet on the Celtics in this one. Uh, I would actually lean towards the home dog here for the Bulls. They've been playing a lot better basketball of recent. They didn't make any moves before the trade deadline. They lost a close one versus Cleveland in their last game before the break. They're leading as much as 17 in that game, and they lost that one 180. Uh, 108, though, one. Uh, oh five. So that might have left a nasty taste in their mouth. In the first meeting, head to head wise, the Celtics rolled. Man, they won by twenty seven points, covering a minus twelve and a half line. I expect this game just to be a lot closer than the first meeting. Uh, that's why I'm kind of leaning towards Chicago as a home uh, double dog, a double digit damn near underdog here. Uh, this is a big number for the Celtics to cover. They're two seven and one ATS last ten. Uh, first game back from their All Star break. This definitely isn't a best of best Boston spots. Uh, this is a good spot, though, for Christos Porzingis, though, if you're looking at props. The Bulls have struggled guard shooting front court players. But um, this feels like one of those cases of just too many points. The books are kind of accurate on the number here on this one. And I could definitely see the Chicago Bulls backdoor cover in this line. So could I. But you're staying off at this point? Yeah, there's only two bets I have on this card. Uh, there's It's the first day back from the NBA All-Star break. I've been rolling in – all the other sports of NCAA, MMA, NBA was really good heading into the break. We had uh, betting with Bouquet last time here, uh, last Thursday, right before the R-Star break. Uh, me and Jose were digging deep inside the prop angles, ended up taking some Vince Williams action in the first quarter, and he ended up smashing. So uh, I've been rolling here in the NBA, and the NBA is one of those things, like if you start for some plays and stuff like that, I mean, it's great to have leans, but I play enough NBA Daily Fantasy where I can – get more action in on these games than actually betting on them because there's only really two spots that really stand out to me on the card today. I mean, this is, a, this is like a flip a coin type of game. I mean, it, it, you, yeah, the Celtics are going to win, but they're going to win by 10 plus points. I mean, first game back from an All-Star break, I said to you earlier, 43 and 12. I mean, that's on pace for one of the best records ever in NBA history. I think it's time to start fading the Celtics here after this All-Star break. They're going to be fat and happy. They damn near have the number one seed locked up in the East. Uh, I'm looking to fade the Celtics in the second half. Yeah, I I like it. And then it's important to be 
you know, stay in your shoes and be conservative in that first game back, uh, first day back of NBA after the All-Star break. So I, I like it and respect it. Let's roll on. We head to the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans, Louisiana. Houston Rockets 24 and 35 and 21 on the road at the Pelicanos 33 and 22, 16 and 10 at home. Pelicans playing nice into the break, 7 and 3 over the past 10, 22nd fastest pace, 98.2 possessions a game over that stretch. While Houston 3 and 7, 101.20 possessions a game, 7th fastest in the league over that stretch. Now we heard from our guy, Cuban connect. Not only is he on the Celtics team total over 116 and a half, but he's also on the Rockets plus seven and a half here. Rockets team five and 21 on the road. This total is sitting at 229. It's juiced to the over. It opened up at 227 and a half and dropped initially before it started climbing. And then we have the spread. Oh, sorry. I wanted to bring up. Oh, damn, I screwed up. They're both on total. Sorry. Let me move over to the spread here. From a spread perspective, we are sitting here with Houston at plus seven, minus 102. Uh, they open up plus six and a half, so it's been a half point move. Uh, this got up to seven and a half for a little bit, and then it came back. But we're sitting at seven right now. So let's take a look at the cash flow. Uh, Von Polo on Rockets first half money line. From a cash flow standpoint, we have 52% of the tickets and 58% of the cash on the Pelicans, 69 and 68 on the under. Uh, both teams here on the first of a back-to-back. -back. Uh, Troy Torrance saying his database says Rockets a cover and says we'll threaten the money line. Both teams on the first half of back-to-back. -back. Rockets play at home versus the Suns tomorrow evening. And uh, the do I have it here? The Pelicans play here at home uh, versus the Heat tomorrow night. Uh, Fred Van Fleet. And Cam Whitmore needed the break. Uh, Van Fleet had missed five games with the adductor strain. Whitmore had missed three games because of an ankle sprain. And Udoka says that both will be in the lineup. Uh, Terry Eason, unfortunately, hasn't played since New Year's, and he's not going to be available. Take it away for us here. Do you agree with Troy Torrance's database? Says He, he says he may have to get involved. Rockets, Pelicanos, take it away, Brizzy. Yeah, angle on this one here. Uh, it's been probably one of the most profitable angles in the NBA so far this season. I'm going back to the well here with the Pelicans' first half spread, minus three and a half, minus 120. Uh, I, I like this cap here. Uh, the Pelicans' stars like Zion, Ingram, and McCollum, they all weren't a part of All-Star Weekend in Indianapolis. The only person that was a part of the All-Star events was Jordan Hawkins in the Rising uh, Showcase games. Uh, before the break, the Pelicans were hot when seven out of the last eight. They have the best franchise record since 2007, 2008. That's just a synopsis of how good they've been playing this season. Uh, they've won the best first half ATS home records in the NBA, 17, eight and one ATS. The Rockets will get back from Van Vliet. And I think it's going to take some time for their offense to find continuity. Uh, they had uh, Zor Thompson or, or Amin Thompson, my bad, wrong twin. Amen Thompson and Cam Whitmore and company run the point guard since Fred Van Vliet's been out, a.k.a. that's basically Jalen Green getting the ball and jacking up shots with Alfred Sangoon running the point guard. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for Fred Van Vliet to get back inside this offense and this Rockets team to get clicking. Uh, the Rockets' bottom five first-half road teams in the NBA, 9-16 and 1 ATS on the road first half, 3-7 and seven ATS last 10. Uh, just in general, they've been horrible on the road, dropping six away from home, five and 21 straight up on the road this season, next to dead last in the NBA for three point shooting on the road. Uh, and I think that's going to be the case and scenario. Uh, maybe they back to recover the spread because the Pelicans on a first half of a back to back. But I think the Pelicans are going to come out hot in this one. I can only get you a minus four first half, minus four, minus 108. If anybody can that's find fine. better than that. All right, Brizzy is on the board with the Pelicans, minus four, minus 108. Let's roll on. We move on to 8 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern, by the way. Uh, BJ saying the Rockets are horrible on the road, Pels or nothing. But let's roll on. Clippers, Thunder, Paycom Center in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Clippers, 16 and 11 on the road, while the Thunder, 37, 17, 21 and 6 at home. Clippers 7-3 and three over their past 10, playing at 13th fastest pace, 99.4 possessions a game over that stretch. OKC 6-4, 21st fastest pace, 98.20 possessions a game. Uh, I've got first half up. Let me take a second to move it over to full game. This is where we stand here. We have OKC sitting as a very, very, very slight favorite, minus 1 and minus 105. 
Uh, they opened up at minus two. This got up to two and a half before it started dipping. So a one point move towards the LA Clippers. And then when we get to the total in this one, we have the total sitting at 235 and a half. Uh, 235 and a half. Uh, this opened up at 237 and a half. We've dropped two points. Uh, Badlibi says, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Oh, bad little bit. Okay, there we go. Uh, bad little bit. Uh, my bad. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, Clippers won nine straight this year with at least two days or more rest. Interesting. Uh, you know, old team uh, probably liking rest. Uh, interesting angle. Uh, both teams are on the first half of a back to back. The Clippers play at Memphis tomorrow night, the Thunder play at home. First, the Wizards, so the Thunder don't have to travel. And Gordon Hayward will be making his Oklahoma City Thunder debut here in this one. And, man, uh, Harden, what can I say about him? He's playing strong defensively. Career best, 42.1% from three. Averaging 8.4 assists. He's trying to prove people wrong, and he's done a nice job. And Clippers have won 19 of their last 24. A healthy Clippers squad. How long will that last? Von Polo says Clippers for him. BJ says Clippers for him. And Sly Astute, our guy Astute Chaos, is on the first half over 115 and a half. Marcus McCarthy says Thunder game. What does Brizzy say? Take it away, Brizzy. Clippers, Thunder. Yeah, I know we don't want to talk about too much of the last game, but uh, man, that last game versus Golden State for the Clippers, they showed a lot of depth winning that game without Kawhi Leonard. PG-13, they were down by like four. PG-13 fouled out with like four minutes left to go, and it just looked like a right-away W for the Dubs. And uh, the Dubs did Dub Nation things and uh, ended up losing that game. The Clippers have been really good form, second-best record in the NBA, 10-3, and three, last 13 on the road, five-game road win streak. Uh, the break should definitely help a team like the Clippers, who are one of the oldest teams in the NBA. But it's hard to really uh, – I'm not looking to fade the Thunder on their home court. Their home court should definitely give them the boost here. They're one of the best teams in the NBA as home favorites, uh, 15-7 ATS, 18-9 uh, ATS at home for the season. On this number, the Clippers are 3-6 and six ATS overall as an underdog, third worst in the NBA, despite the Clippers winning the first meeting. I'm kind of leaning towards the odds makers as uh, OKC being the rightful favor here in this one. Uh, the over kind of seems appealing as well. This number seems a little bit too low. Uh, the first meeting in this between these two teams went way over 240 and three straight overs head to head. And I think that's more of due to the matchups. Uh, the Clippers have more longer wing type of players and the Thunder have a little bit shorter of a front court. I would say just Jalen Williams, like guarding like a guy like Kawhi, like, I don't know. It just feels like this game could definitely go over here. Uh, Chet Holgrim's been going over his point prop. I think it was. What was the number on Chet Holgram's point prop? Uh, over his two and a half assists, actually. He's going over two and a half assists, eight out of his last 10 home games. I uh, thought that was a very interesting prop. But um, overall, I think this is going to be a great game to watch. I want to bet the Thunder, but um, just doesn't seem like a uh, lovey-dovey type of spot. Like This seems like a game that you're when you're going to bet this, you're definitely going to sweat. But, um, I mean, the Thunder, when they've lost a previous matchup against teams, they're 14-4-1 uh, ATS this year. So, I give me the Thunder. We have a move on the Thunder. Is this an addition to your two spots? No, no, this no, was no. always the plan. Okay. No, this is a, this is not an addition to the spots. We're we're confirmed with two spots on the card today. We might add some more as uh, the injury news comes out. But, um. This seems like a live betting type of day, like where you can catch crazy lines due to teams being rusty. Do you want the minus one at minus 105, or do we want to talk money line? I would take the money line here. Money line here for you. We can give you a minus 110, minus 110 at Pinnacle. There's many. I, I'm with Troy. There's many mixed signals in the market here. I, I lean towards the thunder, but uh, – no bet for me yet, Jim, until we can oh, get – Okay. I want to see it. how this market clears up a little bit because I don't think this goes up higher than minus two or three. But, man, this is a uh, – it seems like Oklahoma City's written all over it. All the numbers are telling me that the Thunder are the bet here in this game. 
Okay, no official move here for our guy Brizzy. Let's move on. 9 p.m. Eastern. Washington Wizards 9 and 45, 6 and 22 on the road at the Denver Nuggets 36 and 19, 21 and 5 at home at Ball Arena, Denver, Colorado. Washington 2 and 8 over their last 10 games, playing at the fastest pace in the NBA, 104.05 possessions a game, while Denver 5 and 5, playing at the 28th fastest pace, 96.10 possessions a game. Washington getting almost 8 more possessions a game than the Denver Nuggets. Let's get into the line history here. I got the money line up, so let me quickly switch it over to the point spread. And here we go. Wizards, Nuggets. This is sitting here with Denver as 15 and a half point favorites. They opened up as 15 point favorites, and now 15 and a half point favorites. We already heard from Ron Crawford. Ron Crawford, a spreadsheet play of the day is these Wizards. This total is sitting at 233. 233 opened up at 230 and a half and climbed all the way up to 233. So big move towards the over and a very slight move towards the Nuggets. When we take a look at the Nuggets, they have 48% of the tickets and 45% of the cash, 60% of the tickets and 66% of the cash on the under, and yet it's climbed, which is very, very strange. Uh, Dan Kelly saying Marvin Bagley getting a lot of playing time since Gafford gone, which should please uh, Bagley's father. Uh, both teams on the first half of a back-to-back Wizards play at OKC tomorrow night The Nuggets travel to Portland to play the Blazers Tomorrow night uh, KCP and Jamal Murray Both probable uh, KCP had missed three of the past four games With a right hamstring injury Murray set out the last game before the break with a lower right leg injury uh, Both have been practicing, both are good to go uh, So uh, Brian Keefe Land in uh, Washington They won their first Two of their first three games you know, Under Keefe and then they fell off uh, as expected. Uh, they went into the All Star break off of, of Diaz forty three and fifteen, which was uh, one of the very few highlights. Um, hard to think about the Wizards without thinking of uh, Kyle Kuzma's hair. Take it away for us here, Brizzy Wizards Nuggets. Yeah, uh, Denver definitely needed the All Star break. They had a lot of injuries. They're three and ten ATS heading into the All Star break in their last thirteen. They need to string together some wins to get a top seed in the Western Conference. Uh, the Wizards came out the break with no real clarity in the roster. To be honest with you, uh, I think Kuzma should be back for this one. He's uh, back. No news on Isaiah Livers, um, which it does. You might laugh in the chat and you'd be saying, "Why the fuck is he talking about Isaiah Livers?" It's a huge key for this game. I mean, Marvin Bagley is about to get fried by Yochik. Uh, since the coaching change, uh, the Wizards have been more competitive. Uh, they've, in their first meeting, uh, I, I, I kind of lean just towards Denver. In the first meeting, Denver had a double-digit lead for the majority of the game. They're up by 17 points with like four minutes left. I don't see too much change in this game. Ironically, uh, Yochik has had a triple-double versus every team in the NBA but Washington. In home wins of 10 or plus more points, Yochik has averaged 10.8 assists uh, per game with a 62% hit rate. So uh, everything's telling me triple, double Yochik and the Nuggets to win here is probably the play, but uh, not one that made my card. But um, that's probably what I would go with here. Uh, what's that under on FanDuel? Let me check real quick. It's like under the uh, FanDuel player prop performances, it's Yochik triple, double, and Denver Nuggets to win at plus 154. That's the way I would attack this game. All right, let's roll on. Stacks play of the day, man, over 23 and a half points, rebounds, and assists here for Justin McKelvey. Let's talk Hornets 13 and 41, 5 and 20 on the road at the Utah Jazz 26 and 30, 17 and 10 at home, Salt Lake City for this one. Both teams 3 and 7 going into the break, but very different. Uh, Utah was on that great roll and then it fell off. And Charlotte, uh, out of nowhere, uh, won a few games, uh, the big surprise here. Uh, but Trey Mann uh, is the Stacks play of the day, over 23 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. And hard to believe Charlotte won three straight games. So let's get into this here. Uh, so this is one of the spots uh, where both the Charlotte Hornets and the Pistons improved at the deadline because they had players who want to play. Uh, that was a big difference here. Uh, so we've seen that with the Hornets. Let's talk about it, and let's talk about the line history here. From a spread standpoint, we have these uh, Hornets plus 9.5 and, and minus 107. They opened up at 9.5. They got up to 10.5, and, and they're right back at 9.5. There's been no movement then at Pinnacle on the spread. From a total standpoint here, we are dealing with a 233 juice to the under. This opened up... Oh, Sorry, that's Washington, Denver, my bad. 
uh, get over here. This is 228 and a half, my bad, excuse me. Uh, that opened up at 231. So this one has dropped towards the under. And then when we get to the cash flow, the Hornets have 73% of the tickets and 72% of the cash, but the line was moving towards the Jazz. Now it's come back. Uh, then we have 63% of tickets and 47% of cash on the over. So bigger bets have come in on the under, and the line's gone in that direction. Interesting. Here we go. Hornets on the first half of the back-to-back. -back. They play Golden State tomorrow night. As I said, that three-game winning streak, they beat the Grizzlies, the Pacers, and the Hawks, and that came out on the tail end of a 10-game losing streak. Brandon Miller went for 26. Trey Mann went for 21-8-6 and six in that 122-99 beatdown of the Atlanta Hawks last week on the Wednesday. Uh, the winning streak came after they brought in Mann, Grant Williams, uh, Seth Curry, Davis Bertans. Uh, Utah dropped four in a row before the break. Uh, they looked uh, quite good in that Golden State game, 140-137 uh, loss, but... Uh, they at one point were two games over 500 since then they've lost 10 of 14 take it away for us here brizzy hornets jazz yeah you gotta throw my guy uh me chick in that uh trade deadline uh trade uh he's yeah. been backup point guard for the uh the hornets and he's been playing really good basketball this is a gross spread but um I would say my favorite dog of the day is really the Hornets, man. I mean, they were one of the winners of the trade deadlines. Uh, Utah is one of the losers of the trade deadline. Their bench depth has really thinned out. Uh, the first unit now has Keontae George in it. While it's helped them offensively, their defensive numbers have just fallen off since uh, Chris Dunn's been coming off the bench. Ten points seems way too high considering the situation. Charlotte was on a three-game win streak before the break, while the Jazz have been on a four-game losing streak, playing three of those games at home. Um, everything tells me that the Hornets would be the play here in this one. It's just, uh, do I really want to go to the betting window and put my hard earned money on the Charlotte Hornets or just watch the highlights after the game? Uh, I think the Hornets are the bet though. Uh, one of my favorite dogs of the day. I didn't get to the window with it, but I just didn't get to the window with a lot of things. This is the first day from the R star break. We got a long, long season ahead of us. We do. We certainly do. Uh, so, at this point, the look from Justin McKelvey is on Trey Mann, but we move on. Michael X saying Utah. You know, the line is sort of telling me that Utah is the play because we have a lot of public backers on Charlotte. Charlotte. What stops a winning streak, a break? Uh, maybe the, the Jazz get after it, but that's a big They might win the game, but win the game by 10 plus. I mean, yeah, margin, the, yeah. The Jazz were like clearly one of the worst teams that came out of the trade deadline they traded away half their bench depth they haven't won a game since the trade deadline and they've been getting blown out by these teams like they got blown out by the lakers with no lebron 138 122 they lost a three-point game that they're up for a majority of the game against the warriors and that was on that was a makeup game the game before the lakers game they got blown out by the warriors 129 107 so you would think that the second game at home before the Arster break would be a bounce back spot. And then the game before that, Phoenix didn't have anybody in the lineup. It was just Kevin Durant and company, no Bradley Beal, no Devin Booker. They got blown out 115-129. So whatever change that they did make, Keontae George in a starting lineup is not helping their defense. No. 129, 129, 138, 140 is their point totals that they've been giving up since Keontae George has been in the starting lineup. And I, I don't – I mean, we remember watching him last year in college. Like, dude doesn't play defense. He could score. No, well put. All right, let's uh, let's roll on. Next up for us, we have a big one. And we've already heard from a couple cappers, uh, Scotty Rock being one of them, uh, the other being Ralph Nunziata, to move on the Golden State Warriors. So let's discuss at 10 p.m. Eastern, Lakers 30 and 26, 11, 17 on the road at the Golden State Warriors 27 and 26, 14 and 14 at home. I'm with you, Troy. Um, the public is piling in on Charlotte. You know, I'm not going to bet Utah right after the show, but I, I'm now interested in them uh, just because of the amount of people thinking about that three-game win, uh, winning streak. Uh, for Charlotte, then the break, and then the you know public backing them, and the line not moving. In fact, it moved to the Jets. Now it's come back. Very curious to see what happens when this market matures. But let's get back to this Lakers Warriors spot. Warriors playing good basketball going into the break. Winners of eight of their last ten. One hundred two point zero nine possessions game. That's fifth fastest here in the NBA. These uh, Lakers five and five. A uh, one hundred one point nine zero possessions a game. Uh, by the way, Sly Stu uh, definitely leaning over. Uh, 
in that spot. And Dan Kelly saying, wait till halftime if you want to bet on Charlotte, which means maybe that is just a Jazz first half spot, maybe. Looking at that a little more. Okay, but let's roll into this one here. Uh, we know LeBron will not be in the lineup. Both teams are on the first of a back-to-back. -back. Lakers play at home versus the Spurs tomorrow night. Warriors play at home versus the Hornets tomorrow night. And, of course, we talked about LeBron not being available here. Let's take a look at the line and the total. From a spread perspective, we've now hit six for the Warriors. They opened up. Oh, they opened up at six. My bad. They opened up at six at eight nineteen p.m. last night over at Pinnacle. It went to five and a half for a bit. They're back at six. So we've had three cents of movement towards them. From a total, this line's been here. out for a couple of days. And not to cut you off, this line's been out no. for a couple of days. This the NBA games were posted since like Sunday or Saturday of the weekend. This line actually opened up at minus one and a half. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, at Pinnacle, it opened at eight nineteen p.m. yesterday at six, but that's with all the information, you know, knowing that LeBron was not going to be in. So, uh, very interesting and, and helpful. We have a one point move towards the over. Uh, let's get into the cash flow for this uh, Warriors Lakers spot. Seventy one percent of the tickets and eighty two percent of the cash on the Golden State Warriors. Then we have thirty seven percent of the tickets and fifty six percent cash on the over. Uh, Take it away here for us, uh, Lakers Warriors at the Chase Center in San Francisco. Yeah, I wish I would have bet this one when I first saw it because uh, watching the All-Star game, you knew LeBron was going to be out. They did the press conference thing after, and he said he's probably not going to play on Thursday. And then the day after, or I should say yesterday, he's got listed out for this game. But um. The Lakers heading into the All-Star break, they were rolling. I would definitely give them credit. I mean, when six out of the last seven, maybe the All-Star break wasn't uh, what they really needed. The last meeting between these two teams, the Lakers were ever to gut, gut out a double OT win, 145-144. Uh, no LeBron is why you've seen such a line movement on this game. Uh, this I, the On Fandle, this line opened up at one and a half on like Saturday or Sunday because they had all the games up since the uh, – Three point contest was up, and uh, that number is going up to five and a half, and deservedly so, man. I agree with the odds makers here. I'm laying the chalk here with Golden State. They've been on a roll themselves since Draymond's came back. They're seven and two during the month of February. If you've betting, if you've been betting on the Warriors, you've been making money. They should be fired up for this one, especially how the first game went. Uh, this game will be competitive in the first half, no doubt. But once the second half starts, I think Golden State's going to start pulling away late in this one. Rizzy on. The Warriors minus six at minus 108. Let's move on to the final spot on the board. 10 p.m. Eastern, San Antonio Spurs 11 and 44, 6 and 23 on the road. Sacramento Kings 31, 23, 15 and 9 at home. We're Golden One Center in Sacramento, California. These Kings did not look good going to the break. Five and five, sixth fastest in the NBA, 101.9 possessions a game. Spurs two and eight, playing at the 12th fastest, 100.20 possessions a game. Then the Spurs are also dealing with the first half of a back to back. So, and tomorrow night they're in Los Angeles and LeBron will be playing and Wemby will be front and center. So let's take a look at this line history here. First off on the spread, you have Sacramento sitting here at minus 10 and minus 106. Uh, they opened up at minus 10. Uh, they moved to nine and a half, got down to nine and then came back up to 10. They're actually at 10 and a half. Uh, sorry, nine minutes ago, there was a half point move. From a total side of things, we're sitting at, Oh, sorry, wrong one. We're sitting at 241 and a half. Uh, this opened up at 241 and a half. This went down to 240. Uh, got up to 240. Oh, it's up to 242. Excuse me. Up to 242. That move was also uh, 11 minutes ago. 242 minus 115. So we're up a half point. Let's get to the cash flow then for this spot. We have 68% of the tickets and 59% of the cash on the Spurs. A uh, line moving towards the Kings. 32% of tickets, 41% cash is on these Kings. So here we go. Spurs on the first half of back back, like we mentioned. Kings, on the other hand, uh, it's funny that they have the exact same record that they had last year at this time. Because last it year, like it at no, all. God, it feels like they've let everybody down. Um, I still have a small bet on them at 28 to 1 to win the West, uh, you know, which I'm not confident at all. And they're a game and a half out of the top six right now. Uh, game and a half out. Uh, what's the Aaron Fox going to do here down the stretch? Not selected to play in the All Star game. We know he's got you know All Star type talent. Twenty six point eight points per game. San Antonio has lost eight of their past nine. 
What's the respect on Sabonis? Leading the, the tie with Yochik, leading the league in triple doubles, most double doubles by far in the NBA. Didn't even sniff the All Star game. No, it's uh, you know, they're in Sacramento, man. The whole city gets no respect. Uh, Wemby, on the other hand, 20 and a half points, 10 boards, 3.2 blocks per game. Don't forget, Dan Kelly gave it out at 13 to 1 before it went down to plus 180. Uh, <laughs> And in that last game before the break, 10 blocked shots. Uh, what a job he did over the Raptors there. Take it away here, our final game of 37 games that we've capped here on the show. Take it away, Brizzy. Do you want action in Spurs Kings? They got to figure out with this NBA injury news report. Uh, Sabonis was listed as doubtful due to an illness, but now he's listed as questionable because he was – in the building of shoot around. Don't know if he went through shoot around. He was just in the building for shoot around. I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean. Uh, if Sabonis is out, man, I mean, the front court depth of the Kings has really been their biggest downfall. I mean, a combination of Alex Lynn and Trey Lyles trying to guard Wemby, I don't know if the Kings should be laying double digits. But if Sabonis is in, I definitely think they should be laying double digits. So it's really hard to trust the Spurs due to their defense. This could be a backdoor cover for the Spurs. But um, maybe an over here in this one. Uh, this is a game that just too much uh, disparity in the injury news because this is a way different cap. I mean, you know, you want to do the star player theory, but sometimes the star player theory doesn't work when you have Trey Lyles and Alex Lang guarding one of the most prolific centers in the NBA. So I don't know. If Sabonis is out, obviously the line's going to go back down towards the Spurs. If Sabonis is in, obviously this line's going to go up probably towards 12 and a half for the Kings. So uh, you just got to wait for the injury news report on this one. It's, it's a 10 o'clock game, so we have a lot of time. That injury report isn't going to be out until probably like 9 o'clock. So it's it's a it's a hard one. Uh, I wanted to move on this game, but they're not. They're not budging on the injury news report. You can't tell me the dude's supposed to be out. Then it's listed as doubtful. And now because he's in the building, he's questionable now, like, Figure it the fuck out. I mean, you guys said seven days over the break. How hard is it to list somebody in or out for the first game of the break? Yeah, it uh, adds a layer of trickiness because I would like the Kings if that wasn't the case. But here we go. Let's review all action. Uh, Ron Crawford on Washington plus 15. That's the spreadsheet play of the day. And Gambler's first glance from Razor Sharp Picks is the Suns plus one and a half. Tory Coker's on the Magic. Stayed off Pistons, Pacers. I'm going to be on the Sixers. I'm going to be on the Nets and the Raptors team total under. And I'm probably going to be on the Suns with Razor. I think that will be the extent of my action. Cuban Connect on the over 229 in the Jazz game. is on Rockets plus 7.5 and, and the Celtics team total over 116.5. Brizzy gets his card started with the Pelicans first half minus 4 at minus 108. Clippers, Thunder stayed off. Wizards, Nuggets, we stayed off. And I have some interest in Utah. Whether it be a first half look, I'm going to have to spend some more time on it. Uh, Circle me but, down for uh, Philadelphia, New York Knicks under. I think that number is going to go up. But when that number goes up, like there's just going to be one of those ones like with the NBA, sometimes the best numbers betting at five minutes before the game. And like I, I could definitely see that the public's betting over. I, I could care less. I think that game's going to go dead under. Let's give you that under here. 228 at pinnacle, 228 and a half, but we can get you a 229. You're right. It is climbing. We can get you that 229. Yeah, I think it's going to go to 230. Like the the way it's looking, I think it's going to hit 230 and then probably stop and come down there. Under 229 at minus 108. All right, and then uh, back. So that's an addition for Brizzy. Pelicans minus four. We're staying off Clippers. OKC, although very close to making a move on OKC, was Brizzy. Wizards, Nuggets, no action. As I said, I'm interested in Utah. Brizzy's on the Golden State Warriors, minus six and minus 108. And that concludes our NBA breakdowns for today. Uh, I do have to run kind of quick here to pick up Ella from school. Uh, it's okay. I'm going to be a little bit late, but I have to run here. But do tell us, Brizzy, what's going on uh, podcast-wise for you in mixed martial arts. I know we have yeah. UFC Mexico. Make sure you guys check out UFC Mexico. Uh, pin tweet for this week. Got a free play up for this weekend. Um, if you got, caught the line, you caught the line. But if not, uh, you just got to pay a little bit of juice. But uh, make sure you guys tune in towards the uh, Spotify podcast uh, in the locker room with me, Millie Mills, 
big show in two cents. Breaking down UFC Mexico this weekend. And then uh, also we have the PFL Bellator event. Those two promotions have combined for with each other and they're having their first promotional event. Uh, there's a couple topics on there. And our guy, Millie Mills, getting the uh, interviews out there. Um, he's part of the media day for PFL. So uh, that episode should be up later on tonight. I love it. Mills doing a hell of a job. And so are you, Brizzy. Thank you for making time for us. You're going to see a lot more of Brizzy here, uh, breaking down NBA with the squad. Thank you for your time, Brizzy. And do follow Brizzy on X at getting underscore bills underscore. Uh, Jose, my friend, let's put a bow on this. In fact, uh, I'm going to quickly do the uh, the action from our show today, and then, uh, and then I'll bounce, and you can close it up here because i got to run and get Ella. Let's talk about the action here. We'll start with Mr. Gogster's action. He did add one bet, which I imagine that he tweeted out, but let's go over Gogster's uh, action. Yes, he did. So Mr. Gogster's on Florida, Carolina, first period under one and a half plus 115. He's on the Tampa Bay Lightning, Pittsburgh Moneyline Parlay. I need that to cash, and I need that to cash on the puck line badly. So that's... Uh, Gokster's money line parlay. He's on the Devils first period money line. Dallas Ottawa first period. Both teams score. New York St. Louis first period over one and a half. Full game over five and a half. Boston Calgary no goal first nine and a half. And Nashville LA uh, Kings full game over six and minus 105. He had the Toronto Vegas no goal. Uh, for me, this is an extremely important evening for me in NHL. I hope that I can just be alone in the dark and have no one talk to me. I'm on Detroit plus 124. My most important spots are Tampa and Pittsburgh. I'm on Lightning first period minus a half at plus 145 and full game minus one and a half at plus 130. It actually isn't quite as intense as it sounds. Uh, the 300, I have my unit size 300 on the full game puck line. I only bet 150 on the first half, or sorry, the first period minus a half. Uh, sort of a aperitif, if you will but it counts as a full unit here. Uh, then we have Penguins first period minus half plus 138. Penguins full game minus one half plus 115. State off Florida, Carolina. I'm on the Blues money line at plus 102. Flames money line plus 110. Leafs money line minus 102. Then I stayed off Vancouver, Seattle, and I'm on the Kings minus one at plus 106. Uh, in college basketball, spreadsheet play today, Northern Kentucky. Spreadsheet play today in NHL is the Kings. Uh, we have our guy, Mikey Money, he's on the under 136, North Carolina AT and Stony Brook. He's on Charleston, minus 118, App State, minus 8.5, uh, North Alabama, plus 7.5, Grand Canyon, minus 4.5. He's on Oral Roberts, spread and money line. I'm joining him on that. He's on Portland State, spread and money line. Or, no, sorry, just spread. Uh, I'm going to join him on that. I'm not sure if I'm going to bet those two on the money line, uh, just on the money line. I'm going to spend, spend a little time on that. Seattle, minus 6, I'm very interested in. I imagine that the line's going to be moving too far. Uh, at this point, because it was moving pretty steadily towards the Red Hawks. Uh, then he's on UC Davis, minus 117. Uh, there's Mikey D in the house. Mikey D, we're back with horses in nine days for the Fountain of U Stakes and San Felipe and, and others. Uh, Dabby Cab, the waffle play of the day, 6-0. and oh, He didn't bet it. Is FAU first half minus 3, minus 115. He did move on Oregon first half plus a half. I'm going to go with Stanford. I'm going to be a Stanford full game. Not first half against them, but Stanford. Central Connecticut minus 2.5 for Dave Rogers. Georgia Southern minus 2.5. I'm joining him on that. And then Cal State plus 10.5. And, and then we just reviewed NBA. I'm sorry that I have to run, uh, but you are in good hands with uh, Jose Bouquet, the backbone here of us at Pub Sports Radio. Uh, get that cash, you guys. A hugely, hugely important situation for me. Um, Big day. Big, 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 big day. So let's get that paper. We believe in you. Thank you, Jose, my friend. It's crucial. Uh, okay. I love you guys. Hello. We said hello. Bye-bye. Uh, there you go. Jimmy is going to go be a dad, and that leaves us together, ladies and gents. By the way, uh, for spring training baseball starts today. Shout out to Sharpie. Uh, I don't know if he's tweeted out his action here, but I looked at the Action Network, and the, for those who are interested, 50-50 bets, 56% of the money on the Padres, only 405, 458 bets in on the game. So very interesting. I'm not betting it. I'll be watching though. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Appreciate everyone in here. Kelly, Troy, Ian, Michael D. Appreciate you, my guy. Like he said, horses soon. I can't wait for horses. It's going to be fun. And don't forget tomorrow, our horses tomorrow. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. The PSR gold member race is going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. So don't forget to sign up for PSR Gold, as always. And, again, don't forget about Pueblo Palooza. It's coming up. Coming up. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a whole lot of fun, guys. I can't wait. 
Cab, like he mentioned, he's going to be there. Shirts are going to be made. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. We'll be selling merch as well. So if you don't have Pub Sports Radio merch, don't worry. We'll be selling it down there as well. I'll be, I'll be in the corner just hawking shirts. So come over and come by. It'll be a whole lot of fun. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Again, shout out to you guys. Sly, Astute, Joey, Justin, Coin, Dan Kelly. Great calls, Dan. Hopefully our magic come through. I'm a pseudo magic fan, even though I never watch them. But let's let's come on, magic. Marcus McCarthy, Troy, BJ, Michael X, Robert Martin, Mike in here as well. Shout out to all the guests here. Mikey Money, Dave, appreciate you guys. Joey Marinaccio. Joey, uh, the application was sent, Joey. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, that we get approved. I think we will. So fingers crossed. So maybe not homeless bouquet anymore. It's going to be fun as well. So appreciate you guys. We'll be back here tomorrow. Until then, let's fucking go. Fletching, a little spookmaker. <laughs>